Hello! Hi! How's everyone doing? I don't know why I did a weird voice for those first two words. I'm sick. <laughs> I've been sick for... Getting close to a week now, but today it is bad. So I am going to play a game that has a lot of voice acting. <laughs> and just let the game talk for me. Time for side quests that take forever and the fights take 10 minutes. Yeah, so... Yeah. I have problems with this game. But... I also am invested. Like, there's a lot of things that I care about in this game that I, actu that I want to see through to the end. But the gameplay, y'all... Gameplay ain't great for me. It's not doing it. So you are playing Yakuza? <laughs> if a fight takes 10 minutes in Yakuza, like... It's not necessarily a bad thing, but fights with, like, random mooks that I'm five levels higher than in Xenoblade 2 it feels excessive. All right, let's go ahead and switch on over. Had Majima fights in Yakuza 0 that took half an hour on Legend. Yikes. So, I got like 50,000 waifus. And also a big kitty cat. And a dude with a sword. And then more waifus. And then a cool bird man. The cool the bird man is pretty cool. And then a rock waifu. Uh, but this guy is currently missing one of his waifus. So I don't want to play as him. So the game took away... Okay. <laughs> hey, it's sp spoilers for this game. <laughs> In case that was not obvious going into it. Um, the main plot of the game is that all, all, of, all of humanity lives on titans. Which are these just giant creatures. And they live either on their backs or like inside them or whatever. And they, the, the, the titans are like countries. But all the titans are dying off. And there's not new titans. So, there's everybody's just running out of places to live. So there's a war brewing between the Empire and Gormot, the Empire being exactly what it sounds like, Gormot being a bunch of people with animal ears. Uh, Nia here is an example of a Gormotti. Um, uh, so the, the, the Empire's Titan is, like, super close to dying. But their Titan has been really good for, like, they're able to use a lot more electricity because their Titan's body temperature is getting super high. So they can use that as, like, geothermal power, so they're really technical technologically advanced. Uh... So there, there's war brewing, there are some bad guys that want to kill all of humanity. Uh, and those bad guys are blades, and blades are like artificial life forms which can bind with, uh, with humans so that they, they can fight together. So the blades help the, the humans fight. But also, the lines get a little blurred somewhere, because sometimes monsters can bind with blades. And also, a recent revelation is that Nia here is a blade. Uh, but she can, she can also be a driver. So, like, Nia can... 
can Showtime. hang out with with Rex here. And her blade form is way less cool. It's just over-designed anime nonsense instead of a cat girl in a jumpsuit. Uh, but yeah, she's she's a blade, but also she is a driver, and the drivers are the ones who use the blades to fight. So I don't know how that works. But also, she might... She's probably a flesh eater. And flesh eaters are humans who have blade DNA in, in them. Or are they blades with human DNA in them? They are like human blade hybrids. And generally, that's bad. You're not supposed to do that. But also, they seem strong when they do that. And also, at the beginning of the game, Rex got half of his blade's core crystal because he got killed immediately. So is he a flesh eater because he's got half his core crystal? He's got half a core crystal in him, so like he's got part blade stuff going on. Zeke over here also has half of his main blade's core crystal because he was about to die. Uh, and he had, so Rex's blade just put the core, put the half of the core crystal, crystal in him. Well, the core crystal is like the, the heart of the blade, like the, they are, the blade is, it comes out of the core crystal. So Re Rex had hit the half of his core crystal put into him by his blade, but Zeke had half of his blade's core crystal put into him by the Pope. And the Pope is acting like super suspicious right now. Uh, but the Pope did stop war from happening. And also the Pope is blue and an elf and has been alive for hundreds of years. Also, 500 years ago, there was an apocalypse, and the apocalypse was because Rex's main blade lady, Pyra, who is also Mithra, it's it's two blades in one, and they can just swap between each other whenever they want. And, and so Pyra and Mithra together are an Aegis, who's like a super duper powerful blade that can do all sorts of cool stuff. Um... And they fought with another Aegis, and the other Aegis is Malos, and Malos is the guy, like, it is currently uh, in charge in charge of, or at least heavily involved with, the group that's trying to kill all of humanity. And uh, Malos is also the blade of the Pope, which seems bad. So, Pyra and Mithra had a fight with Malos, and that destroyed the world, and now the world is covered in clouds, so now the only place for humans to live is the Titans, who can be on top of the clouds. Um, so, Pyra and Mithra got kidnapped because... Uh, teleports behind you, nothing personnel, kid, edgelord, uh, who is also a, a flesh eater, maybe? Or he's at least a blade. Uh, he's, like, super duper powerful, and he, uh, whipped the party's ass, even though I was, like, 15 levels over him and beat him very quickly. Um... So, there's there's that guy, they stole Pyra, and then Rex was like, Oh, I lost Pyra, I couldn't protect him, I'm a terrible driver, I'm gonna go quit, I quit, this sucks. And then almost every member, like half the party members just punched him across the face, because he was being a little bitch, and then he stopped being a little bitch. And then... We had to go find... So... Pyra and Mithra were once the blade of... 
uh, the legendary hero guy, whose name is Adam. Uh, and the the edgelord evil blade was like a bit a good buddy with adam way back when and there was also another lady who was like basic uh, she was like a saint uh and she had eraser heads power of being able to turn off blade abilities which could also turn off titan abilities so those two things are probably related uh she got murdered and it was like hang on blades aren't supposed to be allowed to get murdered they're, usually they just go back into their core crystal and then they're dormant until they wake up again. And also, that happens if the Blade's driver dies, and whenever the Blade's driver dies, and, and the Blade goes back into their core crystal, when they reawaken, they have lost all of their memories. And so, one of the driving forces behind the, the evil folks... Uh, who go by the name of Torna, and Torna was also the name of, like, the ancient country that the legendary hero was from, but it got blown up in the apocalypse. Uh, so Torna is like, yo, it's super bullshit that Blades can't really live their own lives, because as soon as their driver dies, they are basically just reset back to their factory defaults. And that's stupid, so I'm going to kill all of humans to solve this problem? Question mark? Uh, also, we're trying to get to Elysium, which is a big tree. Uh, and uh, Rex and Pyra and Mithra believe... Well, Rex believes. Huh. <laughs> Rex believes that uh, Elysium has the secret to giving people places to live again that aren't just on the Titans because the Titans are dying. Oh, also, you can see Rex has like a little helmet on his back here. Inside his helmet is a little, a little fuzzy dragon dude, and the little fuzzy dragon dude is a reborn Titan. He's like a several hundred year old Titan. He's at least 500 years old because he was around back when the apocalypse happened. But he was a titan, and then he died, and then he just turned into a little dude. And now he just rides around in, in Rex's helmet all the time. But Rex still calls him Gramps, because he's very old, even though now he's very young. But he's he, he retained all of his memories, somehow. So I guess titans work differently than blades, even though they're somehow connected. Um, there's also artificial blades now, so, uh, Tora and his, uh, data pawn and his grand data pawn made some waifu robots. Uh, and then the bad guys stole the waifu robot technology, and now they have a bunch of evil, evil artificial blades. But these artificial blades are cool. These two, these two are, are nice. Uh, even though they're kind of weird. Uh, hang on. While I'm... <laughs> while I'm here. Uh, so... This... This... Lady? I'm pretty sure Morag's a lady. Uh, Morag is the cousin of the Emperor of the Empire. Uh, and they're the Special Inquisitor. And... Uh... They were, like, working for the Empire, which is like, oh shit, the Empires are the big bad guys. And, like, pretty early on, it's just like, no, the Empire isn't the big bad guys. They're they're just, like, their homeland is dying, and they're trying to figure out how to deal with that. And it's like, oh, okay. Hey, complexity. I like it. And then Bridget is Morag's Blade, but Bridget has been, is, like, the treasure of the Empire because she's like super duper powerful and also she keeps a journal uh, and the only reason why she is like able to keep a journal and thus like maintain some of her memories between her different lives as a blade is because she's like the treasure of the Royal Empire of the Empire so that they actually keep her journal and she's like yeah other blades try to keep journals and stuff but uh, so so that they don't forget their previous lives, but, like, once once the driver dies, you just turn into a crystal, and while you're just a crystal, you can't stop 
people from just not bringing the journal along. So what are you going to do? So she's lucky in that regard. This guy is the prince of a super isolationist society that has a giant laser beam in their titan. And also they were using a, a powerful control device, which, like, the device... In, it controls an artifice or an artificer it controls a giant robot in space and they were using that device that controls a giant robot in space to control their titan and in order to pay the taxes on the core crystals because the pope controls all the core crystals uh, which means if you want to go to war, you need more core crystals, so you need to go through the Pope, which seems not good. So they were using the device that lets you control the, the giant robot in space to control their Titan, and they were controlling the Titan so that they can get extra stuff to pay the core crystal taxes, so their kingdom is, like, super fucked up because the Titan is, like, they're using the Titan juice for stuff. And the Titan is dying, and so nobody can grow any crops or anything. And because they're isolationists, they don't have good trade, and they don't have anything to trade anyway, so they're super broke. And so they want to fight the Pope, but the Pope is super powerful because the Pope has all the core crystals. Uh, but also, this lady can also control the Titan, I guess? So I don't know why they needed the, the giant robot control device. Also, Pyra uh, threatened to use the the giant robot control device to vaporize herself at faster than light speed because that's a thing that the giant robot in space can do. Uh, and it had to be faster than light speed because uh, the edgelord dude that we were fighting uh, moves at light speed because he's so powerful and strong and fast. And so, like, Mithra's ability is, like, she can she can use Foresight, like Shulk. Uh, and her Foresight uh, was, like, I, I can see what he's doing, but Rex just isn't physically fast enough to keep up with the dude moving at light speed. So we lost the fight anyways. Um... Some some of some of the blade designs are all right. Hang on. So all like most of the blades in this game were guest designed by, or most of the the non plot relevant blades were guest designed by like different anime and game designers. So it's like this guy, very obviously from a Final Fantasy designer, <laughs> and then you got this goth lady and this rock lady and this mer merfolk man with giant hands and then you have big hero 6 and then you have fucking hades looking motherfucker and then you have a little anime girl and then you have a little anime girl but different and then you have another anime girl whose panties are showing and then you have another anime girl with a big fist and you have another anime girl with, uh, a, it's, it's fucking Annie from League of Legends, except Ice, because she's got Tibbers. And then you've got, like, this, like, some of these designs are pretty stylistically different, but I think this one stands out a lot of just, like, damn, this design is just from a completely different video game over here. And then you got this lady who you have to buy for a million dollars, and then if you talk to the guy that you buy a million buy her from for a million dollars, then he gives you five hundred thousand back. And in order to power her up, you have to put a bunch of money into a box. And then you have to do a fuckload of side quests that I don't want to do. Oh, I gotta defeat a Brogan Ferris in Temperentia. I gotta use Golden Font. I gotta engage in combat alongside a female blade. I gotta collect Armu Milk Earl Grey. 
I gotta talk to women. You think I got time to talk to women? Get the fuck out of here. And then you have this, like, Xenoblade, Xenogears looking, looking lady, for sure. And then you have a, a Disgaea character. <laughs> and then you have a, an icy rabbit lady with huge titties, I guess. She talks in a southern accent, which makes me laugh every time. <laughs> The art mismatch feels like those terrible Patreon scan scam games where someone steals a bunch of different people's art and then tries to get cash for it. Yeah. <laughs> Kinda. It, it's a gotcha game. All, so, these, like, these first seven blades I got as part of, like, the story. You can't not get these blades. From this blade all the way to this blade. I had to get from fuch fucking gotcha pulls. Hey, who wants a gotcha pull? Hey, Rex, you want a gotcha pull? Uh, you got too many, you got too many commons. Oh, uh, let me, let me go down here. Let me delete some of my commons. Hey, hey, that's cool. Get the fuck out of here. Alright, let's use a rare core crystal, and I'm gonna use a Bravery booster to get my bravery up to level 8 and that'll give me a better chance of Getting a better pull. So let's go Rex Woo! I love it Ah, oh, hell yeah, it's a dude that looks like every other common, uncommon, and rare dude, and not rare, like, all the one to three star blades look exactly like this fucking guy. I hope you're ready for me. I hope you're ready for me. I hope you're, I hope you're happy that you spent your, your cool rare core crystal on, not, like, a fucking generic dipshit. Ah, oh, look at all these other two and three stars f fuckheads that I have. Ooh. Wow. Ooh. Oh, this one's a dog. Whoa. I wonder if I have any other dogs. Yep, there it is. It's the exact same dog. Whoa. Whoa, it's another dog. Whoa, it's the exact same dog. Oh my god. Fucking awful. Oh yeah, also, other fun game mechanics. So, hey, weapon modifications. So, I got all these cool, cool weapons and shit. Uh, I wonder if any of them are improvements. Oh, this seems like an improvement. I can use the Aurelite chip to change critical damage by 25% into increases strength by 50 and also it increases my auto attack and critical rate except the the auto attack text there is completely not at all uh like accurate because it's not like it's auto attack is all of your damage all of your damage is determined by your auto attack, so it's not auto attack, it's just damage. I'm gonna use the core chip. Oh shit, I ha I now have two Aureliate chips. And how do I- how do I get back, uh, the other chip that I had? Oh, I need to use a Pentagon chip. Using the Pentagon chip would get me my old weapon back. But I still have lost the Aureliite chip, because all of these are consumable items! Weapons are consumable items! So if you get... if if I... like, obviously, this, this lady blade is... I'm always gonna be using on this character, because she's the plot blade. 
consumable materia. Yeah. I love Dark Cloud. It's worse than that. It's even worse. Because it's not like I can put away the weapon that's on there right now. As soon as I equip a new weapon, it's fucking gone. It has been used. Dark Cloud with a slot machine. So, I got all these, and it's like, I have to, whenever I find a, a new, a weapon upgrade, whenever I find like a new tier of chip to give my anime girls, I have to get one, like, if I want to be optimal, I have to get one for every single fucking one of these dipshit anime girls. Like, even if I only upgrade the blades that are, like, going to be on the characters that are in my party, that's still nine fucking weapons that I have to get every time I find a new weapon upgrade. When you get to play golf with your waifu weapons. Oh, you want to you wanna see what the minigame is like? You want to see what the minigame is like in this game? Where's the nearest one? Hey, want to see what the single mini game in this game looks like? All right, let's do it. Let's go. Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait. Time. All right. Winning. Winning. Charlie Sheen. Salvage result good. You have seen the minigame! This is the only good way to make money in this game. Is doing that a hundred times. <laughs> and then going and selling all the bullshit that you got out of the chests, and it's it's entirely RNG. However, you can improve your chances by equipping all by going through all your fucking blades. And engaging the ones that have a specific field skill. Hey, do you have- Yeah, you have a salvaging mastery blade. Alright, so if I go through and equip every salvaging mastery blade I have on every single fucking character, uh, then I get better chances to get better loot from the minigame. Oh, and how do you how do you improve the skill? How, oh, it's a skill, so that means you can improve it. So, hey, Bucko, where where was the one that had salvaging mastery? All right, salvaging mastery. Hey, you. Let's take a look. All right, how do I improve your salvaging mastery? Oh, I gotta get your trust up to level three. And then I have to collect tree items from the collectible list. How do I get your trust? Oh, I gotta increase your trust. What's the best way to increase trust? You wanna see? You wanna see how you improve trust in this game? Alright, where's the steak shop? There's the steak shop. Hello, spec butchers. Uh, I would like... 20 Fragrant Samod Stralu. Great, thank you, lady. Alright, time to eat all 20 of the steaks. Alright, we're out of stakes. Hey buddy, how much do you trust me now? I've still got room. Ah, uh, Didn't get you all the way to 400. 20 stakes only got me 360, eh? 
Oh, what a shame. Hey, let's go get some tree items. How do I get tree items? Well, you see. You have to find collection points that are next to trees. Except, not always. This could be a bug collection point. This could be a fruit collection point. This could be a vegetable collection point. In some biomes, this could be a rock collection point. Let's see if we get some tree items. Ooh, entomology! You know what that means! It was a bug tree! It was a bug tree! It wasn't tree items! It was bugs, actually! Good luck, dipshit! Hope you find the right gathering point to find the tree items! Oh, yeah, that could have been tree items, actually. You know, now that I think about it, maybe that could have been tree items. Ah, oh, but I got the RNG that says it was bug items. Oh, what a shame. Aw, oh, dang. Guess I'm not allowed to get better at the salvaging minigame. Aw, oh, aw, oh, gosh. Gosh, golly gee. Oh, you guys don't even know what's up. You guys... <laughs> hey, want to go check out my Merc groups? <laughs> Ooh, you guys want to see what Merc groups are all about? Give me something interesting next time, please. Merc you mission complete. Sinking today. storehouse. New range available at Kurzkaga's Green Grocers. I got some gold, I got some experience, I got some Merc points, and I got a Snow Baby contract, which kind of sounds like it could be Are you even <laughs> some kind of racial slur. <laughs> oh yeah, also it's really good to send uh, blades on on these mer mercenary missions because you can they can randomly. Uh, increase their their skills like they can randomly acquire any of these skills whenever you send them on merc missions which means you don't have to do the fucking like little mini bonus task so it's like hey I don't want to do your stupid side quests Carmen Electra I'm gonna go send you on mercenary missions until you get all of your skills Oh, but how, like, how do mercenary missions really work? Well, that's a good question. Let's find out as soon as I finish going through. Ah. Oh, man. Oh, we got some uncrafted upgrades. We'll, we'll get into those. You see, those little crystal icons means that they're, I can't use them yet. I just, those are basically just the blueprints to things that I can go equip to my blades later. And in order to craft them, I need materials that you can get from gra gathering points or from salvaging. Which is to say RNG. Oh boy, Godfrey is, is getting all kinds of skills. Dagus is getting all kinds of skills. You love to see it. Aw, oh, Titty Lady's back! Let's go! She got an eraser orb! Maybe that's a good accessory, I don't know. I can help out more now. I'm behind you. Ooh, hiding. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. filling out that trust tree. Oh, I love to see it. Can't wait to try it out. Can't wait to try it out. All right, so I've got like 50 different places that I could send these idiots to. Oh yeah, my development level is in Tauntal is is pretty rough. We'll have to work on that here in a minute. But let's let's send some of my dipshits on, on a mission. Do I have any missions that don't take multiple fucking hours? Doesn't look like it. Oh wait, no, I got a couple. I got a couple over here. Only 50 minutes. All right, so antique judgment mission requirements humanoid two. So, let's see. Suggested field skills. Ah. Focus. So, uh, having more suggested field skills makes uh, the mercenary missions take less time. Less real time. If I have zero of the suggested field skills, this mission will take 50 real life minutes of me playing this video game to complete.
So yes. let's let's find some some of these guys that everyone. have the right abilities that I don't already have equipped on someone. All oh, right, Car go, er, Electra, yeah, you, you can go. Uh, do you, any of you? Uh, no, no. Uh, Keen eye, focus, and ancient wisdom are all stuff that only appears on rare blades. So just whatever. <laughs> Fill this out. Oh wait, no, 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 hang on. Since I have all my blades back, I should try and do the pink ones. The pink ones will unlock key items, and usually what these key items do is unlock new items in shops. Well, why does that matter? Well... Have I got a mechanic to tell y'all about? Do I even have... Oh wait, no, I only need one strong person and then a bunch of katana idiots. Okay. Uh, alright, so... You... you uh, and then... Who, who has... No katanas. Sure. Alright, so... Y'all, and then... Do any of my other rare blades have... Uh, oh, you have fortitude. And then, uh, no, we'll put Titty Lady somewhere else. What's your strength? Alright, let's get a little low strength in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ting a ling troop! Let's go! I hereby call you the Ting a ling troop. Great! Goodbye! Uh, do I have any other. Secret route. We need three 35 strength dipshits. Alright. That's one, that's two. That one is currently equipped. Aw, oh, yeah. That's three, baby. And then we'll put Titty Lady, and then you, and then you. And we'll put Titty Lady in charge. The band of the perennial beauties. The perennial beauties. Alright, goodbye. Uh, farming tech. This needs two 35 strengths, two animals, and one dark mastery. Yes. Hope I got that. I do. Uh, da, da, da. Yep. Okay. Yep. Understood. Dark Mastery, there we go. And then this last slot we can give to someone who has one of the field skills. There you go, you've got Botany, get out there. Get out there, little anime girl. I believe in you. Alright, so, uh, as you can see in the bottom left corner there, I'm Mercenary level 4. Uh, Mercenary level 4 unlocked the third squad, so up until I got to Mercenary level 4 by completing a fuckload of these mercenary missions, I... You, you start out with only having one squad that you can send out at a time, then you unlock a second squad, and then at level 4 you unlock a third squad. Uh, your mercenary level also determines how strong one of the best blades in the game can get, which is annoying. Rock is, uh, gate-kept by uh, how high your mercenary rank is. So, like, you, there is a minimum amount of real-life time that you have to spend playing the game before you can unlock his full skill tree, which is cool. So what do we want to talk about first? Let's talk about owning a shop. Hey, Coral Leaf Fresh Fish has... A little medallion next to it. That means I own this shop. What does owning the shop do? Well, it depends on the shop. How do you own a shop? You have to buy one of each item uh, that that shop sells. A lot of shops don't sell their full inventory until the region has full development level and... Uh, also, usually you have to complete some mercenary missions to unlock certain items to be purchasable in certain shops. And, once you own the shop, you get permanent global increases, like increases to your running speed, increases to uh, the range which you can pick up collectibles, increases to how many items you can hold. 
Like, all genuinely very useful items, but they are gated behind multiple different <laughs> things. So let's see if I can buy this shop, because I saw that I have... I unlocked new stuff from this shop by completing a mercenary mission. Also, if even if you buy all of the items that are available, you have to leave the shop and then go back in before you can see whether or not you're allowed to buy the shop. Hey, I'm allowed to buy the shop! Earns gold increase but in battle by 10%. Awesome. Now I own another shop. You get fucking no money for for doing fights, by the way. So that doesn't it doesn't even matter. Uh, hey, development levels. What's development level? Well, I'm glad you asked. Uh, before I get on this tangent, I need to go sell the random shit that I got from the salvaging. Because I need money. Hey, I need money for this. Why do I need money for this? Well, that's a good question. Oh, I didn't collect enough of the items to fill out a set. And so I can't sell any of my items for a good price. Darn. Hey, why do I need money? Well, uh, once you get a region's development level to level 5, which is the maximum, uh, items cost half of the amount of money. Items also sell for half of the amount of their maximum value. How do you increase development levels? Well, you can either buy or sell X amount of money worth of items in that region. That's not the only way. You can talk to random NPCs around town that have a little star next to their speech bubble. You can do mercenary missions. You can complete quests. But this is the most efficient way. So these golden cylinders, I can buy. I can have up to 99 of them, and they cost 5,000 each. Let's fill out my inventory. I got 10,000 gold left over. Now, now we gotta skip travel to the kingdom of Tantal. And we'll go into town. Oh, no, 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 no. The development level is not... It, it's... It's just, you earn points towards increasing the development level uh, by doing all sorts of stuff. But you don't have to do any of that stuff. If, instead, I take all these golden cylinders that I bought and sell them back... Development level 2, baby! New mercenary missions unlocked, so in addition to having to increase the development level to unlock all of the items that are that are in the shops, uh, I also have to do the... I also have to increase the development level in order to unlock the mercenary missions that allow me to unlock the rest of the items in the shops. And I think that's most of the the non-combat mechanics to talk about in this game for right now, I guess. Oh, right. The, the aux cores, auxiliary cores. I can go over here and... It increases 30... Adds 30% 30 chance of evading ranged attacks. Uh, in order to craft this, I have to shove in a certain amount of any of these items... Which are just, like, some of them I can get from salvaging, some of them I can get from gathering. And then once I have the ox core crafted, I can go in and I can equip it to the individual blades. You can only have one equipped to each blade, of course. Bam. Now, this blade, when I have this blade out... It increases the damage dealt to enemies targeting me by 10%. When you have the blade out, you say, well, what do you mean? Well, let's go... Let's go fight a thing. Uh... Yeah, let's, let's, let's take a look at how obscenely, ridiculously massive some of these areas can be. The fucking weather is... Wrong. I can't fucking see anything. Let's go to a different area. No, let's let's stay in this area because I need to fight something that is not going to die instantly. Oh well, not that. 
That giant lobster is level 82. I am vastly over-leveled for this area, and I am level 65 at the most. But, uh, sometimes they just put giant enemies that are way, way, way too strong to f for you to fight. It, just wandering around areas, and they'll make the enemies super big so that their aggro radius is super huge. And sometimes they make them fly. There we go. Level 43. Level 78. Also, now that the clouds have parted a little bit... Oh yeah, that, that thing up there, that's level 88. If it flies too close to me, it will one-shot me. Look at how fucking big this zone is. Oh yeah, and you see you see those little bridges along those pillars? Yeah, I had to cross all of that to get down here. Wanna guess what all kinds of cool stuff you can do in this gigantic fucking open area? Uh, well, you can get killed by flying level 88 monsters. Uh, you could fight some of these level 43 monsters if you really want to. Looks like I won't even have to use the Eye of Shining Justice. Kabam! I will sure no mercy. So, in the bottom left corner there, you can see that I've, I've, my other two blades have their little meters filling up. And once their meter is fully filled up, I can switch to that blade. Whoa! So the blade switching mechanics are actually kind of neat in some of the ways that they are handled. Oh, I, I got it. When you have those red rings around you, it's, you're not allowed to do anything. Uh, so I'm not using any abilities right now so I can show off the combat UI. Uh, but... Because you're expected to switch between those different blades on the regular, you have to make sure that all of those blades are kept strong and, and, like, useful. Because not having three blades equipped gives you massive stat... Be de like, having three different... Having three blades equipped... A de the classes of the blades that you have equipped determines your class. Your class gives you massive stat buffs. So if you have three blades that are all attack class blades, then you get huge bo bonuses to your damage. So if you choose to not have all three of your blades equipped because two of your blades are garbage, uh, then you are going to be at a uh, significant disadvantage. Well, Hat, why don't you just not switch the other blades if the other blades are not good? That works for the player character, and only sometimes, and I'll tell you why. You see that Aqua over there on the right? That is a blade art, and the blade art will start a combo, and you can see the tree that you can follow to do the rest of the combo in the top right corner there. Uh, these combos are, like, your bread and butter for, like, actually doing combat. You need to, you really need to use those blade move combos in order to, like, do well in combat. So, in order to properly fill, like, do a variety of those combos, you need different elements, because you follow the tree using blade arts of different elements. The different elements, like, you get the different elements from the different blades. So, you need to be able to switch between the blades in order to use the different elements for the combos. So you need all of those different elemental blades to be good. Uh, so you need to make sure that all of your blades are good. And also, uh, your party members are generally really smart about, like, switching to a blade uh, that has the appropriate elements so that you can continue the combo. So that's good. But 
<clears throat> that so. that does mean that even if you, the player, are are like going to be super picky and only ever use one blade, which is not a good idea for a variety of reasons, uh, then you still need to uh, make sure that all six of your party members' blades Let's are see. good and useful. Oh right, no, I was wrong about there only being one mini game. There's another mini game. Let, let's talk about the other minigame. So I need to go back to Gormot. I need to go to Torgoth. The music in this game is fantastic. And, and... <laughs> there are things about this game that I like. And I'll get to those. But I'm really on a roll about... <laughs> talking about how like obtuse and over complex and fucking stupid so many <laughs> of the mechanics in this game are oh shit the dad robot fixed the other sex robot oh hell yeah we'll we'll talk to her in a bit Hey, let's play Tiger Tiger. Let's see. What's Tiger Tiger? Let's 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 take a look. Tiger Tiger. Hat, I'm sick. Also, Hat talks about talks for an hour about Xenoblade systems. I I had to. So these enemies can only be attacked from certain angles, uh, but you get a bonus if you kill all the enemies, and you also get a bonus if you collect all the gems, but you lose some of your stuff if you get hit. The turtles can only be attacked from below. Some of the hitboxes are really jank. Uh, which is frustrating, otherwise this game might actually be fun. It's it's not bad. Like, this minigame's alright. It's kind of fun. You get frustrating moments of just like, what was I supposed to do about that, but... So you get some treasure chests, you get a bunch of jewels... Fuck. Oh, that hit me twice. Oh, there was another one. I died. Let's try that again. Oh, that, that got a double hit? Damn, that's crazy. Shrimp sighted. Wait, the shrimp is running away from me. What does the shrimp do? The, pro the shrimp probably gets me cool shit. Damn it. I don't have enough air to make it all the way back. Shrimp, get back here. What? The shrimp has nothing? You get nothing from the shrimp? I'm loving it. The fuck was that? Ah! I thought you said there was only one mini game. I forgot <laughs> because I don't use Tora. Okay, sure. We'll, we'll just do level one mini game. Huh?
God damn it. God damn it! It's so easy to bump into the platforms while trying to collect the stuff that's on the platforms. I got the big box, and now I'm not allowed to use my weapon anymore. I got all the gems! da da I didn't get all the treasure chests, because you lose a treasure chest every time you get hit. Alright, so I got Affinity Extend 3, Opening Art 1, and Silent Strike 1. What the fuck does that mean? I hear you cry. Well, that's a, that's a good question. Let's go over to Tora. Let's take a look at Poppy QT. And let's, uh, let's take a look at this. So, the the poppy blades are unique because they're artificial blades, and you need to do all this dumb bullshit in order to, uh... Uh, in order to... Uh, improve them. So now we got some new skills, like the silent strike and the opening art and the affinity extend. Let's equip her with... Critical Restore. And Affinity Max Barrier. And we'll use some ether that you get from the mini game. You have to play the mini game in order to in to increase the capabilities of the artificial blades. It restores HP dealt when skills connect. Yep, seems great. You can also change their elements and, like, their roles, which is really cool. This is a cool system. This game has too many fucking systems. I, I need, I need 5,000 of those fucking ether crystals to unlock Evasion Mods 5, but it makes, it makes the character way better. Oh yeah, and also you still have to give them special weapon chips in order to make them stronger in combat. And you also have to still do this! How well did this game explain any of its systems? I'm 70 hours in. Alright. Most of the systems were explained in a generally satisfactory Morning. manner. Let us face the day with a renewed I don't recall really having to look anything up. I recall having to look up more stuff in Xenoblade Chronicles 1 than this one. But this game has too many mechanics. Alright. Hello. Hello, no pun father. Greetings. Now that Lila all good and fixed, Tatazo wonder pondering what to do next. Maybe you should improve Lila more or work on power up for Poppy. Too many enticing options. What's up? Oh my god, he just actually said what's up. That's amazing. <laughs> what my companion meant by that was salutations. Thanks to friends, Lila's in perfect working order again. Must offer great apologies for trouble caused by Lila. That th things that happen in more Ardane are all quite unfortunate. Lila not know how to apologize enough. No worries, from now on Lila work hard to serve Master Pawn as Artificial Blade. Cool. So we rescued Tora's dad, who is Tatazo there, uh, from being enslaved uh, and ha being forced to make a bunch of artificial blades. 
And also, this is his artificial blade, Lila, uh, but she got stolen. Uh, but we got her back. Oh yeah, also, like, a lot of conversations with random NPCs around town will change depending on what quests you've done, like, what the current world state is. Like, there, there is a truly obscene amount of random dialogue that you can get from this game. There's a lot of content in this game. If you like playing this game, this game's incredible. It's got... It's got so much fucking stuff in it. And some of the quests are, like, really interesting and tell interesting stories that make me more invested in what's going on in the world. And, like, I, I sometimes will start to care about some of these characters. Like, in this town, uh, a quest that I had to do, which was mostly just, like, a shitload of fetch quests that are mostly just, like, progression gates of, like, you're only allowed to continue progressing this quest once you've progressed cert a certain amount through the main story of the game. Because several of the objectives were just like, Ah, I want some chocolate! And then you have to go buy chocolate, uh, but you can't go to the place to buy chocolate until you've progressed further in the game. So there was an old man living in this house. And the old, the old man, uh, he used to be a driver, and he's retired now, and he was living with his blade. And his blade was... Uh... This lady. And she's, like, super nice, and she's been with him a long time, and, like, she's always cooking for him, and just trying to take care of him. And, like, he, because of all the time that he spent working as a mercenary, as, like, as a driver, uh, he distanced himself from his family, so, like, you, you go and talk to his kids and, and try and get the kids to reconnect with him. And you, you get him, like, some mementos that he and the Blade buried from back when they were younger, and it's, it's... Like, a shitload of fetch quests, but it's, like, it all adds up to being, like, just this nice little story about this old guy and, and the life that he's lived as a driver and all the time that he's spent with his blade. And then he dies. He just dies of old age in, in the final cutscene. And as soon as he dies, his blade was, like, in the middle of bringing around a tray of treats for everyone to enjoy, and the tray is just scattered across the ground, and her core crystal is is on the ground next to it, inactive. And when you reactivate her core crystal, she doesn't remember him at all. Like, all of her memories of that lifetime that she spent with that guy who was so close with her, like, she was basically the mother of the family. And, like, the kids will never get to see... Like, they could theoretically see that blade again, but it's not the same person, because she hasn't lived the same life. And it's like, damn, that's fucked up. That's like, that is actually emotionally touching. And I'm like, that's so, that's so sad. That was a really interesting quest. But it is so indicative of what the whole game is. Because playing that quest fucking sucked. Because all it was was a shitload of fetch quests. And that's the whole game. The the game, like, it introduces interesting characters. It introduces, like, like it, it sets up a really interesting world. There's so many cool things going on. And I'm invested. I want to know what's going on with the world and with these characters. I want to see their stories. But just playing it is such a pain in the ass. <laughs> the actual gameplay is, like, just stands so distinctly in opposition of my enjoyment of the game.
Oh god. Okay. Let's go. Let's go do plot. My throat hurts now from talking about game mechanics for a goddamn hour. <clears throat> Sounds like an example of something that's better as a let's play. Oh, absolutely. For sure, for sure, for sure, for sure. Oh, I need to go up. Whoop. It's also kind of funny how, like, all of the characters' primary blades are also characters in their own right. So, it's like, I have, in terms of, like, like non-blade characters, I have a five-person team that is, like, moment to moment, I will have a three-character party running around. But because each of those characters has a blade that they bring with them... I'll walk into a cutscene, and I got a party of ten just strolling through, like, this this throne room or something. And it's just like, it seems so crowded. It's really funny. Sounds like it had become unfocused. It handles the characters really well, because the character like, they do a good job of, like the characters having their moments and, like, the characters being more active when the plot stuff that is going on that is more relevant to them. Like, Nia, the little cat girl, her, like, a lot of stuff is just over her head for the most part. Like, she's smart, but it's just like, oh, this, this brewing war between these these two nations like i don't have much to say about this i'm here to help rex reach elysium so like she she's she's going to do that she she will help him accomplish the goal but when it comes to that kind of stuff she's just like i got nothing to say here i'm just going to i'm just going to hang back while the characters who are actually involved will will engage and like it it rotates through the characters really well like there will be some like some a period of like a few hours where the the plot is really focused on where the dude with the giant sword is from and so he's doing a lot of the like the talking he's he's very forward facing uh, and usually, like, the blades are paired up with the characters, so most of the time, if a character is particularly involved, their blade will also be involved. So you don't- you rarely ever have all ten characters active at, at the same time. Nia or Nya. I think that is the joke. Lady Morag, we've been expecting you! You've heard my business here, I presume. I, we require a passage to the Cliffs of Moritha. Yes, ma'am, the preparations are all complete. I doubt this will be an easy voyage. Are you sure you're up to it? Absolutely, ma'am. By, by order of His Majesty the Emperor, only the finest sailors have been gathered for this assignment. I'll have to thank him for that later. Well then, shall we depart? As you wish. And also, really great music, again. I think Morardane has some of the best music in the game. It's very good. Uh, none of these have special abilities, so I don't care. Hey, need to talk. Something wrong? DB sisters from Laris Trade Guild follow you here on commission from Ardanian Army, but thinking about it, it's obvious that only potential customers crazy enough to come here is you. It's all big scam! Is that right? DBD can tell that friends burden with very important something, so DBD will graciously let you off if you help DBD with the request. I'd be interested to hear the details. DBD would like friends to collect sellable items from Cliffs of Moria. Stuff here rare, so we may rake in monies, then forget you for your deception. DVDs first time, so not sure what to look for. Go get valuable stuff. Great.
Sounds like an MMO kill quest. A lot of the blade skill quests are similar to that. Usually the actual quests will have a little more something going on. Oh yeah, so the Cliffs of Maritha are cool. I'll so talk. Are oh no, she's in her blade form. No. Titan, drifting aimlessly until death takes it. I just remembered. Malos mentioned this place once. It's a shortcut to the world tree. Makes sense. Let's push on. Pyra is definitely somewhere ahead. <laughs> Alright, he's stealing her essence. Look at all this trash. Huh? <laughs> Rex, are you okay? <sighs> Rex? I'm 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 fine. He's having a heart attack. Could it be? Pyra is in trouble. I don't know. But we have to hurry. I have a bad feeling about this. Only have one quest quest left in OSRS? Damn. don't need these things you want to be free of them as i do stop it i'm not like you at all i am Look what you've been hiding away. Oh. All right then. If that's what you want, I'll do it for you. There was a giant mecha hiding inside her all along. Line delivery is great. So, that's one of the big things that I like so much about this game. I... the Let's A lot of the voice acting is quite bad. But they handle the voices in a really interesting way. Because... I, I've talked about this before, uh, but rather than, like, the, the ancient... Uh, like, the ancient peoples, like folks that were around in the before times, hundreds of years ago. Rather than those characters have like ye olde ancient like medieval -ith voices uh, going on, they just sound like Americans. And everyone from the modern era all has like British or Scottish or Irish accents. And their accents depend on which titan they're from, because that's, like, their region. Ooh. And I really like that. I think that is a really clever way to do this, to, like, 
handle this kind of plot and these kinds of characters. I, I like it a lot. There's so many things I like about this game. Ooh. Machine Gun Julio. Let's go then. I can take care of myself. Let's fight the bird. Oh wait, hang on. Everyone put your weapons away and walk over here, please. It won't be that easy. You have my thanks. Morag. Morag, come over here, please. What? Thank you. Super move! Yeah, the the battle shouting is just <laughs> it's way too much. It is truly obscene how much they make the characters yell. Oh wait, we've got break. We've got topple. We've got launch! Smash it! The the attack animation took so fucking long that the smash didn't go through, are you kidding me? Oh my god. Zeke, you suck so bad. Smash does a fuckload of damage, so I'm, <laughs> I'm frustrated that it didn't go through. Well, let's do it. Let's do a chain attack. It's got a, a water orb on it, so let's do a lightning attack. Uh, dark on the water orb, I guess, maybe. Sentimental burst. Excellent. Water orb was almost broken. Do the lightning. Yeah. And now we can do level two attacks on it. And draw mark. Get him. Nice. You get extra experience and money if you do a big overkill doing the chain attack. And you can extend your chain attack by doing an extra, like, to do an extra couple of ta attacks if you break the el elemental orbs that are applied to them. How do you apply elemental orbs? Well, simply, you hit them with a full elemental combo, and the orb's element depends on the element of the final attack in the combo. How do you break the elemental orbs? Well, you have to hit them, you have to hit the enemy with attacks that would be effective against that element of orb during the chain attack. And also you can refight uh, named enemies if you want. Let's see. I adore fishies. So shiny and Oh yeah, this spot? This spot right here? You mean this fishing spot? 
this fishing spot that's just like the side of a cliff over like a massive drop into the cloud like into the abyss yeah this is where you fish this is where you get fish cloud fishing but the clouds are so far down oh this is the edge lord that moves at light speed What is it? Did you remember something? It is done. Once we establish a link with what Mikhail is preparing aboard the Marsanis, everything will be complete. And the Aegis? Oh, that? It's not an Aegis anymore. Just... a lump of meat. Are blades made of meat? <laughs> I see. It's unclear. Ah! Come forth, Ophion! Oh no, he's gonna summon the mecha! Don't do it! Oh wait, no, not the mecha. Right. The control device for the other mecha. What's that? The one that protects the the world tree. <laughs> nice. Problem solved. Clever girl. It has its own attack instinct, capable of autonomous action. <laughs> she knew that. That's why she came quietly. No matter. All it needs is a little reprogramming! Cult, I don't want to get banned. Damn it. Mia, put your jumpsuit back on. It's close. You look like a dork. Let's go. Look at her driver form. She's adorable. Whenever she does a uh, a uh, uh, a blade art, which is like the the big special attacks, she does a little dance, and it's fucking cute. She's great. It'd be nice if she had a tail, What's but here? you can't have everything. Flora heals an aching soul. Oh yeah, this is where you get flowers in the rocks. Oh boy, salvage. I'm not using premium cylinder on that. Oh yeah, near the beginning of the game, we tried to just sail a boat to the world tree, to, to Elysium. Uh, and that giant serpent that uh, armor dude is currently fighting showed up and obliterated us. Let's see. Also, armor dude is Malos, and Malos is the uh, the other blade. He is the the evil blade. He's a bad boy. What the fuck is this? I don't care about this. Currently, the only thing I care about is getting Pyra and Mithra back, which is. Plot relevant, I, I guess. Oh, I have to go in there. I see. <laughs> Rex is there. No one looks more more like a dork than him. I just, I, I just like Truly, Mia's other. Like, I, I like her driver form so much more. So cute like this, and then and then she goes blade mode, and is just like, oh, look at me, I'm a special little anime girl. It's so disappointing. The wind is my mate. Oh yeah, here's another fun mechanic. 
So sometimes you'll find interactive interactable objects in the world that require certain field skills to be equipped. They can be equipped to any character in the party, or any character, including the characters that aren't in your party, but often this will result in having to do exactly this, which is, oh god, I need to go find a blade that has at least one level of wind mastery so I can equip it. I, I have a blade that has the extra level of wind mastery that I need, but I just need to go find it and manually equip it. Wee! Yeah, sure. Hey, Morag, have you known Zeke for a long time? Indeed. We'd never spoken directly, but I knew of him. The prince paid a visit to Morodain, did he not? It must have been not long after his departure from Tantal. Yes. Now that you mention it. How was he? Back then. Well, let's see. As I recall, the guards reported capturing a suspicious man, dressed all in black, and with a funny accent. That's right. They'd stopped him at the palace gates and were about to throw him in jail. He was already a shady customer back then, huh? It's a good thing the prince was feeling generous. Otherwise, it could have been a major diplomatic incident. Most certainly. Thanks be to his forbearance. That's just like Zeke, though. I can almost picture it now. <laughs> that isn't even the worst of my prince's heroic tales. There are worse ones yet? Oh yeah, loads. He's pretty much misfortune on legs. Like, when we visited Uriah, they mistook him for a rookie guard and made us drill for 72 hours straight. My prince was happy as a clam, said it was a rare chance to see other countries' training regimens. If you ask me, though, it was beyond awful. The grub was worse than Armu Kibble, and they didn't even have baths. Calamity indeed. Yet, despite that treatment, he let it pass without creating an uproar. Quite the gracious person, ain't Tarzi. Gracious? I think he was just doing whatever he felt like. Heart to heart constants complete. I like the heart to hearts in this game. They're they're they were good in Xenoblade One as well, where it's just like a nice little moment of the characters talking to each other. Let's see. Flora heals an aching soul. Oh yeah, the the people from Tantal, which is where Zeke and uh, Lightbulb Lady are from. What? What do you mean? Not again! They have more, like, they have accents that are closer to, like, standard American accents because they're, like, they, pr their whole culture is that they prided themselves on, uh, on being descendants of, uh, the ancient hero, Adam, even though that was a lie. Uh, because, and so, like, they tried to like, keep their culture and make their culture more, like, more similar to how things were back in the day. Back in the day when they had American accents. Like Pyra and Malos and other, other folks. So it's like, that's a neat world-building thing. That's, that's clever. I'm interested. That is a cool thing that you're doing with your setting. Huh. And the game is full of stuff like that. I just wish it were more fun to play. Is that all? Oh, cool. I got to go find Earth Mastery Blades. All righty. All right, you can't change your blades while you're on a wall. All right. Up 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 up. Who has Earth Mastery that isn't out and about? Earth Mastery 1, Earth Mastery 1. Do I have any Earth Mastery 2s? Yeah. That's very kind of you. 
Uh, hey Zeke, do you you have no Earth Blades? Uh, we'll replace the Teddy Bear with Earth Master hey, Two. There we go. You're the boss. Hey, you're the boss. Useful, right? How would you rate that? We. Whoa. Path of the Believer. Is this... Is this necessary? Is, am I actually going along the intended route? Do I actually need several levels of Earth Mastery Blades to progress in the story? Oh, gross. Let's see. Barely seems worth both. Uh, I... No, I still have one of the stupid Mastery Blades equipped. Whatever. Oh yeah, some of the interesting things that it does with the... Oh, great. I was just about to say something good about the combat system game, and you you applied the status effect that makes it so you can't do literally anything on me. Oh yeah, sometimes enemies will do attacks that, that make all of your auto attacks clink off, which is super annoying because uh, when you do an auto attack, uh, you can then, like, cancel the auto attack into uh, a driver art, and the driver arts are, like, all of your actual attacks that actually have effects and stuff. And if you do that cancel, uh, then it does extra damage. So that's pretty neat. Uh, also, I think it increases your uh, blade art meter faster. You have unwavering resolve. Whenever I feel anything in my left eye, that's a problem. He he has an eye patch over his left eye. That's why he kept that's why he kept saying that. Oh yeah, so in addition to the the blade combos, uh, there's also driver combos, and those are like one of the big reasons you want to like have a good loadout of blades and switch between them uh, during combat rather than just like focus on making one blade really good. Or that's that's one of the the reasons. Uh, so uh, there are there's like a chain of effects that you follow through in a uh, driver combo. Uh, there is break, topple, which, like, break just sets up topple. It doesn't really do anything on its own. Break, and then topple, which knocks an enemy over so they're not doing anything for a short while, and they also take additional damage. Then launch, which launches them up into the air, and they spin rapidly, and it's really funny to look at. Uh, and they also take additional damage while in that state, and then smash. And smash, like, will take them out of the launch state, but uh, it will, like, smash them back down to the ground, and it does a shitload of damage. And it does even more damage, or, like, all of these different effects do extra damage if uh, they are also affected by certain elemental uh, status effects that are applied from the blade arts. Which is another example of, like, hey, that's kind of a cool thing, but it's so much. Why'd you make it so complicated? What have we here? Oh, hey, it's him. You're finally here. 
I've been expecting you. Malos. Your core crystal. So you finally gave up your little human act. Are you looking for a place to belong? Or are you just a fickle child who doesn't know what she wants? <laughs> Where's Pyra? Hell if I know. She's probably dead by now. I'm alive. She's alive. Think whatever you like. But don't be mad at me. All I'm doing is reclaiming what was stolen from me. <sighs> You're never going to see her again. <laughs> you make me laugh, you know that? Look at you. That salvager brat I picked up in Argentum. Standing here with the gall to challenge me? Someone's gotta. We're not gonna lose to the likes of you! You did well to make it this He's got the fucking Monado? What? You end here. Hold up. Never! Goodbye, Tora. That wasn't even that big a fall. Watch it, Shaled. Malos's power will destroy anything it touches. It'll take your arm or your head right off. What? What are we gonna do? <laughs> Poor, helpless little maggots! Oh! Nia! You! Nia! I should have used this power earlier. But I was afraid. Afraid to go back to those days. Lives have been lost because I was afraid. Nia! But someone taught me that I don't have to be afraid. Now I get it. My life has a purpose. Anime powers activate! Your power might destroy Malos, but my power restores. As long as my friends have a will to live, that's all I need. There is no wound you can inflict that I cannot heal. Blade weapons, too. They were born from us and could be healed just the same. Rex, everyone, it's time to end this. Yeah! Cool, I don't actually have to use Nia as a blade. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Is it going to address that Malos has a fucking Monado? Because in, in Xenoblade Chronicles 1, that was kind of a big deal! Also, Malice's voice acting is pretty great here. I'm, I'm enjoying it. Nope! He just said Minato Cycle. Yep, he's... How, how did he... Why is there a Minato? He's he and he's using the abilities. He's using he's using the Monado abilities. What's going on? This is the first time it's been brought up. They're 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 not. I can't imagine they're doing the Keyblade thing. Oh wow, elemental effects wear off so fast on him. That's annoying. I'm way over leveled, so like I'm not actually in danger, but damn. He's using all the abilities. What's going on? 
This is what happens, where it's just like, I'm having this, like, fight where, like, I'm... <laughs> I don't actually care about the fight at all, I just want to know what's going on with the plot. I'm gonna kill you! Don't you know when to give up, Malos? Yeah! That's an annoying power! So sorry. You've gotta be stopped. You're a menace to the entire world! Is that so? Oh, you sweet talker, Neil. Don't you see how weak you are? Heal all you want, but you can't even scratch me. Where are your claws, kitty? Hmm. Very well. Then I'll show you. You asked for it. Rex, help me out. You got it. Follow my lead. Okay. Me out. Power of friendship. the replication rate of your body cells even an immortal blade is made from the same stuff as any other <laughs> she gave him super cancer this is why Jin recruited you he saw that power who knows why don't you ask him yourself <laughs> I've got just one thing to say to you. The place where I belong is right here. <laughs> See ya. It remains very funny how much more effort his voice actor is giving than everyone else's. <laughs> Dude is over there peeking the microphone. He's given it his goddamn all. Everyone else is just like, "Ah, oh, well, you see, I use my power, and then and that's gonna beat you." So, <laughs> let's see. Never again brought up. There's no way. Huh. Let's see. I adore fishies. So Rex yell dot lav. Yeah, Rex is not good. Rex's voice actor isn't that great, just in general. I think he might be the worst like voice performance out of all of the main characters i went in and oh shit it's crimson derrick how are we gonna handle him crimson derrick the most dangerous of all birds why is his name derrick a lot of these like named enemies just have weird random generic names oh, 
As your Steven Viridium Bob. <laughs> it's just England there. Chartreuse Dave. I think one of the rare enemies was just like Hungry Evan or something <laughs> ridiculous like that. Ice. Let's, uh, maybe lightning is good against ice. Oh yeah, there's also a narrator for for the combos sometimes. <laughs> I, I, I kind of filter them out. Magnificent. We need we need the fucking killer instinct dude in here. Ultra combo. Uh, oh yeah, stop thinking is a status effect, which makes it so the enemy can't move, I think. This blade is also always in a bathtub. That's that's her character trait. Oh right, I need to I need to control Nia for a second after this fight. Oh right, since this enemy is like hanging halfway off a cliff, I'm not actually going to get any of the loot from it. Great. Because all of the loot is going to go off the cliff. It took me a lot of time to actually get like any kind of hold on the combat system. The combat system takes a lot to actually make it like fun. And even with like even then certain characters like Zeke here, I do not enjoy playing as Zeke. All of his attacks are so fucking slow. Theoretically, he does a lot of damage per hit, but my favorite blade to use is currently stole has been stolen away from me for the past like over like two hours of game of like active gameplay or something like that for plot reasons. What's here? What have we here? Nice, Man. very nice. Not again! 
We were careless before. Next time, don't get distracted. All right, I'll go through the cave. Are you enjoying the game? I'm really interested in the plot. I'm hella invested. How would you rate that? The waifus are swords. The waifus give you a sword and also power the sword. And sometimes do special attacks. Truly, What's here? All rest is a wonder to explore. Why is it a secret area? I I'm pretty sure this is a, this is like somewhere I have to be. Oh. Hey, hey buddy. Let's let's not. Okay, I guess this is not where I have to be. Where do I go then? Oof. Darn. We'll have to be extra careful from now on. Proceed with caution next time. Oh, I see. Oof. <laughs> Let's see. Flora heals what? an aching. Why, why did soul. the notification not show up? Oh no, is something broken? Thank you very much for the 500 bits, Ash. I'm sorry that your Muxie is not showing up for some reason. Oof. Also, of course What's I would love it? Muxie if Muxie were a blade. Is this the one with a giant robot or is that the next one? I vaguely recall seeing something about a giant robot for Xenoblade 3, but there also seems to be giant robots in this one. It's just that they're plot giant robots. There was a single, like, there was an implication of a giant robot in a fight way earlier in the game. What's when Mithra first showed up who is Pyra's alternate personality. Also her true personality, and also Tsundere. There are, like, actual, just regular-ass mechs in Chronicles X, yeah. Pyra! Pyra! Ah, uh, you missed the highlight. We already have everything we need from her. There it is. How would you rate Muxie if they were a blade? I'm just trying to get back what was stolen from me five centuries ago. Oh, he's fine. Malos. <laughs> you didn't think you could put me down that easily, did you? I Rip am that guy. an Aegis. Thank you very much for the 500 bits, Cult. I can't believe you fell for it. <laughs> You did this to her! She betrayed herself as an Aegis, forming a bond with a piece of human trash. She tried so pathetically hard to hold on to her memories of you. But, in the end, I got them all. Uh, she put up a brave little fight. Please don't steal my memories! Cute stuff like that. Sorry, boy. You came to this desolate place for nothing. Do you really want this useless husk? Go ahead and take it! Pyra! Pyra! I'm so sorry. Pyra. Mithra. We made it this far, but... Rex. Rex, Rex! Nia. Got it. Dromok, take care of Pyra. Understood. <laughs> What's this? I thought you'd start bawling and charge at me. What a big boy. 
Stupid. Yeah. I was stupid. I didn't understand Pyra and Mithra's feelings. Though we were destined to follow different paths, I tried to walk together. I walked in the shadow of the Aegis's light, blindly walking my own path while she walked alone. What are you blathering about? So, I might be stupid, but I've made a decision. Oh, what have you decided? You've come all this way. I'll hear you out. It's obvious. I'll crush you into oblivion and take Pyra and Mithra to Elysium. <laughs> crush us? Me and Jin? You couldn't take Jin on your own. And on top of that, I've regained control of all my Aegis powers. <laughs> not to mention the artifices. You're doomed, boy. I'm not. That thing is just a used-up shell. You can't rely on it to save you, boy. I now understand what Pyra and Mithra wanted. And I understand what I have to do to make it happen. What it means to be driver and blade. Huh. Everyone, stand with me one more time. Let's get Pyra back and go to Elysium. He does truly have the power of God in anime on his side. You are nothing but a gawker, brat. Let's go then. The emotional piano music sounds. Meanwhile, Pyra, <laughs> you're in the way a little bit. Oh yeah, also, uh, when when Nia revealed that she was a blade earlier, uh, he's doing all the moves, he's doing all the moves. It's so cool. Uh, Nia, Nia revealed her true powers when we were uh, searching for the third blade. Of, of the Aegis. Because Pyra is one blade, Mithra is another blade, but there was a third. And the third was so powerful that even the ancient hero couldn't use it. It was so, so strong and powerful and cool. And we went and found it. And when, when we did find it, uh, Rex touched it and it turned into dust. And everybody was like, what the fuck? And Rex is like, oh, I get it. So the third blade is probably the power of friendship. Oh, have I mentioned how irritating that ability is? You did mention that. <gasps> oh no. What? We lost. This is ice. Jin, you. But of course. This is Jin's true power. You may have awesome regenerative powers, but everything <sighs> becomes futile once you get down to absolute zero. <sighs> Absolute zero. While they're vulnerable, let's do it, Jin! Oh. Rex! Ah. Nia! I'm not done with you yet! Oh. Morag, this is getting us nowhere! Uh. Oh, too bad. Tuh. Puppy! Take it! Trash! Ah. Puppy! Tora! Ah. Uh. It can't end like this! Enough. Give up, Rex. For 
Forget about us. Rex, please listen to what we have to say. Our power has done nothing but bring you pain. It would be better if such a power didn't exist. We told you we wanted to go to Elysium, but the reason why we wanted to go there was to beg our father to let us die. So forget us, Rex. For the sake of the world, abandon us. Abandon you? When you are injured, I feel your pain. When you feel pain, I feel the sorrow in your heart. <laughs> what the hell? Has he finally cracked? You really think I can just stand by like this and watch someone I love suffer? You can make it to Elysium. You can make it, with or without us. So please... What would be the point of that? Listen, I swore to you. We're going to Elysium together. That's a promise. Rex. I'm going to Elysium for you. I'm doing all of this for you. We'll do it together. We'll find out together. We'll find your place in this world. Find out where we're headed and see what our future holds. So believe me, I won't let the world burn a second time. So, Pyra, Mitra, join me! <laughs> Rex, dude, you suck! <laughs> The Mac. This is our whole being. This is the power we were granted at birth. So, Rex, are you still sure you want this? Tell me, do you love this world? Yes. Mia, is your dad? Well then. Oh, it is a gear. Yeah, especially these scenes where Malos is also talking, like talking opposite of Rex is just like the difference is crazy. What? He is by far the worst voice actor out of the main cast. <laughs> it's so terrible. A new sword. His Japanese voice actor is way better too. Oh shit. It's Hatsune Miku. Apologies, Rex. Worry not. All is well. I am lost no longer. <gasps> he gets Watch cool this. mecha armor. <laughs> That's better, don't you think? I could get used to this. Everyone, attack! Yeah! Payback time! He still has the leg holes in his pants. <laughs> you can't get rid of the dumb pants. How would you recognize him? Finally, Pyra has tapped into her true power. In this tutorial, I'll explain about making the most of her in Fucking shut up! I'm trying to read the tutorial! I'll explain about making the most of her in this in her ascended state. In normal battles, you can achieve Pyra's ascended state when both Pyra or Mithra's affinity and the party gauge are at the maximum level. 
When you fulfill both of these conditions, press X while holding down R to trigger the transformation. Pyra launches a blade combo in the Ascended State. Her power to make whatever she imagines real lets her choose any combo route to trigger. To choose a combo route, press up or down. Pyra is incredibly powerful in her Ascended State, but she can only sustain it for a limited time. Keep an eye on the gauge as it indicates how long the state will last. No need to worry about this now. There's no time limit in this particular battle, so free feel free to go to town with Pyra's true power. Oh, Yeah, that's a lot of damage. All of Jin's attacks are so cool, and then... Oh, what is the protagonist's big cool move that he can do now? Oh, he can stab them. He can just poke them with a sword. Oh, he can do a spin. It, it is truly frustrating how much the gameplay stands in opposition of how much I like the story. I was going light speed. How are you matching my speed? Impossible. You Buck enough. have such power. I don't get it. But I'm not complaining. This is what I've been searching for. Big cool anime fight. <laughs> and Mithra's true power. He did a Bankai. <laughs> a lot of the voice performances fluctuate drastically. So sad. Rex. Weak. In me now, or you'll live to regret it. I don't want to fight you. I just want to get to Elysium. That's all. I won't let you stop me. That's not going to happen. We have goals of our own. You and anything that stands in the way will be wiped out. What goals? Our only purpose. Destroy humanity. Destroy the world. Then, destroy the architect. Huh? I am an Aegis. Created by the architect to erase existence. The ultimate weapon. The Endbringer! Oh, I should play Final Endbringer. Fantasy. Yes, my only purpose is to destroy. I am the Endbringer. That is why I must go to Elysium and awaken the ultimate artifice, Ion. You can't be serious. I'm nothing but serious, boy. This is the sacred duty entrusted to the Aegises by the Architect. You're wrong. Father doesn't want that. You're deeply mistaken. Enough. I know I'm right! <laughs> Indeed! It ends here! Use your cool anime power on the big snake. Hmm. 
Nice. Another guest at the party? That's Siren. Bring it on! We got a cool angel mech fighting a giant laser snake. Feels like it feels like a lot of the main characters' voice lines just didn't have direction. Oh, <laughs> yeah, sure. But it's just like no, like what? Like, was he just not given context? Is he just reading lines off a page? What's going on? Why is it like this? today, huh? Hmm. That bell. I think it was the sound of our heart. Has it stopped? Hmm. It stopped. But something's still ringing out. Oh no. Yes. So. So we have to go now. We've got to be with Rex. Also, her getting her memories back was explained earlier. Uh, she had, like, a plan B in case she had to vaporize herself, where she was putting a bunch of like, memories and, and stuff from her half of her core crystal into the half of the core crystal that Rex has. Also, hey, it's the ancient civilization that got blown up. Oh my god, are we gonna fight Mechon down here? <laughs> That'd be wild. <sighs> Meanwhile, in America... Yeah, I guess. Rex? All in one piece. <laughs> oh shit, it's I Detroit! Guess if you were injured, I'd be feeling it too. Huh? Yes. Uh, I'm okay. Huh. Was I in your lap? <gasps> oh no! This whole time? I'm so embarrassed! <laughs> It's like the opposite of when we met. By the way, I can see you're back to your old self. Uh, I mean, thank you. <laughs> I didn't say anything strange, did I? Talking in my sleep, or grinding my teeth, or snoring, or... I'm such a terrible sleeper. You snore and grind your teeth? Well, well not always. It, I mean... <laughs> It was just a figure of speech, that's all. Babaka. <laughs> it's okay. What with all the fighting and stuff. You're out for the count. R right. That's good to know. Where are we? Where is everyone? We're under the cloud sea. This must be the place the salvages call the land of Moritha. I don't know what happened to everyone Whoa. else. Over there is where we fell.
This place looks cool. From all the way up there. Looks like there's some kind of powerful updraft coming from below. It saved us. I wonder if it caught the others too. I'm sure it did. Yeah. Still okay? Let's get our bearings and then go look for them. We need to find a way out of here. Any ideas? Over there. Are those... the World Tree's roots? Yeah. I bet there's a way up there. There has to be. I'm good to go. Let's move. Um, how's Pyra? Um. She's sleeping. Shall I call her? Nah. Let her sleep. She's been through a lot. You're too kind. Rule five of the salvager code. Always be. I don't think we need to hear it. <laughs> Come on, let's go. Damn. Hey, at least let me finish. Spoil sport. Yeah, like again, it's not always bad. The 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 interaction, like the voice acting, the performances. It's just often bad, <laughs> which is not what you want. It's at its worst during the most important moments. That's the thing. That's the problem. Is like when they're supposed to be like all like emotional and like, I'm going to fuck you up and I I'm never letting you go. I love you, Mithra. It, it, it It's just the worst. And, like, you put him across from Malos, whose voice actor is just going as hard as he possibly can. And then you compare him to, uh, Shulk from Xenoblade Chronicles 1, and Shulk could scream like a fucking champion. He hits those big dramatic moments so well. And then you come to Rex, and it's just like, not only is he the wor- like, consistently the worst voice performance out of the main cast, like, he can't do the big emotions. He sucks. <laughs> no. Like, well, what are you doing? And it also, it feels like he could do better if he had better direction. Because there are lines that are so blatantly, like, the problem with the line is that he was not given proper direction for the line. Like, moments where it's supposed to be like, No! He's just like, No! Like, what are you doing? <laughs> we'll make a Rex no emote. Oh, God. No, John Zeno played run here. <laughs> run from here as fast as you can. Oh my god. John Freeman, who is Gordon Freeman's brother? Rex is a driver of the Aegis. The power of the master driver was has awoken from it within him. That means that Rex can freely engage blades that originally res resonated with other drivers. It's always oh, he can just steal other home. people's blades now? Alright. Well. Perennial beauties reporting in! Rex can now use any blade. Oh, uh, but he keeps all of the blades that were already resonated with him. Oh, well. I guess that just means that I give everyone else all of the blades. Cool looking environment. Zombie ghosts, leave this place! But this is our house. You're all mine. I'm not hitting up the fucking gathering points. What the fuck am I getting out of the gathering points? Ooh, I got three pieces of wood. Woo! Really? You got to meet Adam? 
Yeah. I mean, it's like I have broken bits of memory about him. All right, Adam is where we learned the the true power of friendship. I mean, Mithra. Adam told me something. We had a dream when he we touched told me the sword. To fight for the things that I wanted to protect. I made my choice. I fight for you and Pyra. I mean, I'm still not good enough for you, but... Don't say that. Yeah, the collection points are awful. I've made a choice as well. Not to live in fear. And they're even worse when you have the abilities that make you get more stuff from them, because it makes the, the little interaction moment take even longer. Hey, when you transformed before... That form... It's our true nature. The sword changed, right? Uh, yeah. It's not just physically stronger. It also lets us control artifices at will, so be careful. Careful? I mean, don't get carried away. I... I see. Which one of you is it, in that form? Which one? Deep down. It's not one or the other. It's both at once. Like... Coffee with milk. What kind of a... <laughs> Something like that, anyway. So you're Pithra? Myra? It doesn't matter. Pyra, Mithra, or both me. Call me whichever. Okay, sure. Oh! Do you like the Sundere anime girl, or do you like the, the shy, quiet-talking anime girl? Ah, oh, fuck. I kind of like Mithra being, like, more flat on her reads. I think it fits her tsundere. It's not like I like you anything babaka personality. But, um, I also kind of like Pyra more. Well, Mithra, I like both of them. I like both of them for different reasons. Um, Flip a coin? Sure. Heads is Mithra. It's Tails. We're going with Pyra. I think Rex does a better job of, like, delivering Pyra anyways. So, here, we'll, we'll take... We're, we're stuck with the option that has slightly better line delivery from the main character. You can transform at will. If I need to. I see. <laughs> what? What are you laughing at? Well, I kind of preferred your hair in that form. It's like that, is it? <laughs> you jerk. That sound. It's the others. Come on. Yeah. I should have gone with Mithra. I thought it was just like figuring out the name. I didn't I didn't realize it was which anime girl do you like more? I thought it was just like a voice line selection. Fuck, I fucked up. I should have gone with Mithra. I'm a fool. Oh yeah, in in the cutscene where uh Nia got her full blade form one of her big moments was just, like, her exclaiming, like, I love you, Rex! And Rex is like, I love you, too! And, and, uh, and, uh, <laughs> I love you, too! And Tora! And Zeke! And everyone! And Morag! And everyone! I love all of you! 
And Nia's just like, that's... that's not what I meant. Uh, okay, whatever. When did it get so late? Don't worry, I'll protect you from the scary dark. Reset? Where would it put me? Because there's no manual saves. Yeah, sure. We'll we'll go back because you could just skip. You can skip cutscenes. It's fine. I know I saved at after the chapter end, and I could just skip through everything between then and that choice. Aha! Uh -huh. Skip! Party formation has changed. You can now steal everyone's blades. I hope you can live with yourself. I also enjoy how Mithra is just trying to be like, hey, you can control, like, the unstoppable power of giant robots. Uh, maybe you should not use that for evil. And Rex is just like, what? People can use giant robots for evil? Yes. You can transform at will. If I need to. I see. <laughs> What? What are you laughing at? Well, I kind of preferred your hair in that form. Ah, fuck! It's like that, is it? It wasn't, it wasn't, I was a lie, god damn it. I've been pranked. That sound. It's the others. Come on. Yeah. Choices don't matter. Perennial beauties reporting in. I hope things went well. How did you do? Oh boy, we got... We have new ranges available at Griogiar's Greens and Adil No Music. Stop on by for a chance to own the shop. There are subtle flavors. Even... I'll back you. I'll make a fun... Make sure that rewards... Yeah, his helmet turned into a space helmet. It, it kind of looks cool. Oh shit, look at all these contracts! Ah, uh, Brad Platform- or sorry, Brad Flatforms. I love Brad's Flatforms. Ooh, Sunny's a little greedy gun. <laughs> yes! Time to affirm my existence. I'll support existence. you in every way. Watch your mouth. <laughs> I'll do it. I like traveling. Send me wherever you want. Oh wait, I should try and avoid having more strength 25 plus fellas in a mission than I need. It'll be child's play. Hey, I can handle it. I can handle it. The band of the perennial beauties. Check Discord. Oh no. Oh wait. Uh, strength twenty. Strength thirty-five plus. I don't care about that one. Well, maybe I do. <laughs> I'll do it. I like traveling sort of send me wherever you want, don't they? Oh, do I not have enough? I don't have enough. I don't have enough powerful blades. OK. 
Okay, we'll go with this one. How's the gotcha? Did you get your secret super Stop. rare waifu oh, yet? I got the the rabbit lady with the big titties. So, I mean, what else could a man ask for? I vow to carry out my sworn duty. Love a lady with big cities. I can't. I can't lose to these fools. What the fuck are you? Uh, Jin? He wound up here too. <clears throat> <laughs> it's an American! He's still wounded from before. <sighs> Rex? You? you can't move, right? I can't just let you die, here. Yeah? Even if you are my enemy. I mean, you could. Mitra? You must. But don't kid yourself that I think this is a good idea, Rex. <gasps> He's in my party? Ooh. Neat. Ah, uh, it's a Goldo. I see. You could it. Obviously. How could you mistake it for anything else? Ultra slap. Ha! Why not? Oh, he's got break. Topple him. Yoink. The guitar riff was rad. There's a lot of good music. But why did you help me? But I'm a bad boy. You're not supposed to help the bad boys. Yeah, we know that. Even so, it would have been wrong. I just thought... I can't let it end like that. And... No. It's nothing. <sighs> hey! Jin, I think you need some antidepressants, bud. You seem like you're having a bad time with it. What? Those flames. Nobody deserves to be goldoed. Got a lot to learn. You've got to burn these monsters up. That or smash their core crystal. Otherwise they'll keep coming. Rigid! Poppy! Gramps! Rex! Are you okay? Poppy, find friends! But but Jin? <laughs> oh, really? So you lost Tor and the others? It's fine. Master Pond is not as soft as he look. It's faint, but I can feel the energy signature of Morag's weapons. She must be here too. Okay. Let's rest up, then go look for them. Hey, Rex. What about Check Discord. Oh shit, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah. I think I beat him up pretty bad in that fight. I couldn't just leave him to die. I thought it would be something like that. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, your sweet bleeding heart. So, what are we going to do? Uh Mithra? Maybe you could uh Fine, whatever. Give me a sec. Yeah, the little baby titan dragon dude is Gramps. Because he was an old... He was an old dragon island. And then he died. And then he turned into a little... Little fella. Incredible. What awesome power you've acquired. This is the power of the Master Blade. 
Master Emerald. Master Blade possesses the data of all Blade cores. <gasps> this is all Control. blades at once. I see. Does that mean I have to? That mean? Does that mean I don't it's have hard. to do the gotcha anymore? It's a human heart. Oh. <gasps> He's a flesh eater. Oh. That seems bad. What? What did you do to me? Easy. You'll be fine. It's not perfect, so be careful with it. Mithra. My name. You still remember it, do you? I guess that makes sense. You never did return to your crystal, did you? <sighs> You're a lucky man, Jin. You've been given the second chance you denied to many brave Ardanians. I doubt your luck would hold up so well if Morag were here. Mithra, didn't you and Jin? Yes. We fought together against Malos. Once. That's why I need to know. Why? Why did you take Malos' side? You really want to know? You only think you do. If you knew... It'd destroy you too. I can guess. And I can tell you. It didn't lead me to the same conclusion as you. Flesh eaters are more powerful, yes. Laura. She's in there, isn't she? <sighs> With everything you've done, we can't forgive you. And if you're gonna keep standing in our way in the future. Keep trying to destroy the world. We will stop you. But right now? Naive kid. This is the land of Moratha. And it's a place of more wickedness than you can imagine. You know it. This land was destroyed long before all rest existed. Birthplace of the architect. That's what Malos said. The. Architects. Jin, I know full well there's no easy way to change your mind. But hear me out. Let's regroup and climb up the world tree. Call it a ceasefire until then, okay? A united front? As you wish. It's not like I could take you on in this state anyway. I believe that is accurate, Cult. Uh, they are... I, I can't remember exactly if they are... I, I think they are... I, I can't remember. I can't remember if they are blades with human... stuffed in them, or if they're humans with blades stuffed in them. I cannot recall which way it is, but I... I believe that it is Blade with human stuffed in him, because Nia... I'm pretty sure Nia took on... Uh... Took on her dead sister. And that's that, like, influenced her driver form. Because, well, sister, air quotes. Like, she... She was bonded to her dad. Well, she, she was bonded to a dude. And that dude, like, that dude treated Nia like his daughter. And he also had another daughter. And he was, like, a rich, a rich aristocrat kind of dude. But the daughter was, the, the human daughter, or Gormati daughter, was sick with an incurable disease. And he spent all his money trying to cure her. And then she passed away, and then I think sometime during that, Nia took on some of the sister and became a flesh eater. The place is reminding me of the end of Custom Robo. Yeah! Yeah, it does! Ah, oh, shit. Later, Ash. Also, 
if this was the birthplace of the architect and the architect was the guy that made Elysium, then that would mean that this place got apocalypsed before the apocalypse that Mithra and Pyra and Malos did the fight to make happen. So this is like super ancient place. Also, before I, for, before I forget any longer, that is... That that is absolutely perfect. It really it really gets his delivery across. Thank you, Burke. There's a smaller version if you need it. I'll 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 take a look at that later. So where do we go from here? There's no point in just heading back, so I guess we press on. I guess so, forward's the only way. I guess we'll have to head over to that falling building. We may have him with us, but he's not in the best shape, and we have fewer fighters around than we used to. We should exercise caution as we proceed. We made it back in one piece! Uh. You're engaging Bridget right now, so you better live up to the exacting ex standards set up by Morag. Make sure to use Bridget's capabilities to her f fullest extent. Am I? I guess I am. I didn't choose to, but I guess I am. And arrived. Oh, this is where we were going. Ooh. Dog. Oh. I need to go find the big kitty cat. They're all mine. Night falls again. <laughs> Damn, dude, you are so edgy. Night falls again. This reminds me of the time all those people died. By my hand. Ugh. No. Oh. oh yeah, there there's another dumb mechanic that I ought to show off at some point. But I currently don't believe I can. Or can I? Can I just leave? No. Oh, I can. I can I could just leave. Why am I allowed to just leave? All right, whatever. This is where I watched my parents die, Rex. Wicked! I like your attitude! What do you want to do? Let's go take a nap. This, this is where I watched your parents die, too. So, you build up bonus XP by doing side quests and, and other random shit. So, you can just, like, jump up a bunch of levels every now and then, whenever you, you go take a nap, if you if it's been a while since you've done so. Yeah, I'm feeling stronger than before. Oh, he's doing the Parappa thing. I like my thing better. <laughs> Edgier. Oh. Hi. Rex, let's go visit, visit the grave. But we only just went. Is there something special you wanted to do? We didn't just went. <laughs> that was 30 hours ago. I just had something that I wanted to ask your parents about. We didn't get much time before, so I want to talk to them properly this time, you know? Oh, she's got a good attitude, that one. Make sure you take good care of her, Rex. Uh, yeah, I will. Well, like obscenely out of sequence, but let's let's go view the the heart to heart, I guess. Since we're in the neighborhood. So, a lot of heart to hearts can only be triggered or like can only be accessed if you trigger a an event 
by that happens by sleeping at specific inns. Which sucks, and I hate it. I like the heart-to-hearts, but it sucks that that's the way you make them available. Hmm. Well, Pyra? Did you manage to talk to them? I did. We had a pleasant chat. What did you talk about? Everything that's happened since I met you. And I told them not to worry, because I'm going to do everything in my power to look after you. I'm sorry, what? I can look after myself, thank you very much. I think not. If you go off on your own, you'll just get yourself into trouble. <laughs> Already bickering like you're a married couple, eh? Hey, Gramps! A couple? But really, I, I didn't mean to. <laughs> it was just a joke. Besides, you have to have that sort of metal to deal with, Rex. <laughs> Come on, Azurda, cut it out. Anyhow, we've done what we have to here, right? Time we should be getting back. Oh, we're leaving already? Can't we talk for a little more? Uh, this is actual, actual good delivery! Look, uh, look, uh, hey! Decent voice acting! Wow! Beastie boys acting, yeah, that's what I said. We can do that when we get back, can't we? That's true. But the two of us rarely get the opportunity to talk alone like this. I'm not sure you can say alone when we've got Gramps tugging along. Hey, this old fogey getting in the way. You want me to shove off? No one's telling you to shove off, Azurda. Stop being such a child. <laughs> Youth is a beautiful thing. All right, what was it you wanted to talk about? Do you miss your mom and dad? I mean, duh. Have you always sent money home? That's a more sensitive question. Yeah. I've been sending money back pretty much ever since I left the village to self to become a salvager. I mean, take a look around. There's nothing here. Trade with other countries doesn't really cut it. And being self-sufficient only goes so far. What I earn is a pittance, but it's better than nothing, I think. But it can't be easy for you, either. Living the way you do, you shouldn't push yourself so hard. Hmm, I guess. I can't really leave my family out in the lurch, either. Your family? You mean the villagers? That's right. Everyone in the village is like family to me. I'll do everything in my power to help them. They're all very grateful to Rex for his work. Never thought a mischievous brat like you would grow some backbone. Who are you calling a brat? <laughs> what? What's so funny? Sorry, I didn't mean to be rude. I just couldn't help but admire your way of thinking. I'd love to have a family as big as yours, Rex. What are you talking about, Pyra? You're already part of the family. So can we take this as a confession of love? Very bold of you to do so in front of your parents, my boy. This scene is weird. <laughs> what? Rex, hold on a second. No, that's not what I was trying to say. You, Nia, Morag, Zeke, and Tora too. All of you, you're all family to me. So there's no reason to feel sad or lonely. That's what I'm trying to say. Oh, so much for the boy having backbone. Sorry, Pyra, this one's going to be hard work. <laughs> well, that's all right. I've got a surprising amount of patience. Oi, what are you two going on about? Jeez. Why is the voice acting good in the random side scene that doesn't do anything? <laughs> Finally getting Pyra and Mithra back from the big bad villain dude and having a big emotional moment. The most stilted shit you've ever heard in your life. Random talk in a graveyard? Aw. Oh. Wonderful. Even when his delivery is good, you hate him? Ah, uh, I don't hate Rex. He's not as good as Shulk overall, I think, but I don't know. I I kinda like him. He's 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 a doofus. 
He has, like, terminal animoi- a animoi? Anime boy syndrome, but... I like- I, I- I like a lot about this game. I like this game- I- I like this game in all ways except playing it. <laughs> How about that? Let's rest the spell. Let's get going. A very frustrating problem to have. Oh, can I just loop around? You don't have to validate your love. I wish I loved it. I want... I, it's the same fucking problem as Xenoblade 1. Where it's like, there's so much I like about this game. But I don't want to play it. Oh, okay. There's a door. I see. It's a Robert. Excuse me. Come out, come out. In my experience. What? Press. Calm your mind. No. Structural analysis in progress. I need electric mastery. It. Who has good electric mastery? That isn't currently sent on a stupid mission. That's one. There we go. Shine on the front line too. I think I'll show you my power. I think I'll show you my power! Nice. Brock, pleased to meet you. Yosemite Sam in full plate armor. <laughs> I was not expecting that voice to come out of him. Yeah, the blade voices, like, you thought that some of the, the main cast voices are a bit weird. Some of these blade voices are buck wild. If they seek a fight, they shall get one. Oh. This is new combat music. Die. Finally, it's like the Mechanus field battle music. Oh, kinda is. My thoughts exactly. Everyone's getting psyched. Everyone's getting psyched! Quite a snug birth, my boy. It's not my fault if you fall out during battle, yeah? Game is so polarizing. It really is! I was more understand like if it generally feels like Xenoblade 1 was more consistently good, but this game has really high highs. It's just... <laughs> it's got problems with a capital P. Huh. You're all mine. Open up! What have we here? Xenoblade 1 is consistently good. This game is inconsistently sometimes great. That's a way of looking at it. I'm definitely not coming all the way back up here. Once I have more party members again. Is this where I'm supposed to go? What do you mean? Come out, come out. In my experience. Sure, that chest had a new blade. Probably not. It is exceedingly rare to find a new blade. Just anywhere. Like, 
a core crystal that will specifically definitively get you a new blade. That that kind of thing is very rare. Very rarey rarey. Hello, sir. What have we here? Just gonna, just gonna get this. Get my way. Being over leveled is a what huge boost here? to the morale In for playing through this game. Oh yeah, it might be a uh, 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 an, an extra pouch. Hey, what's what's the pouch? What are you talking about, pouch? So, from shops, you can buy temporary uh, stat boosts that go into these pouches. They're consumable, and they have, like, durations ranging from, like, ten minutes to two hours. Uh, and I hate that. I very, very much hate the systems like this. I only, like, barely tolerated it in Valheim, but it's just like, oh, yeah, eat, eat this cool salad, and you get three of these, like, somewhat minor effects that will just gradually add up over time to make a drastic difference in combat. No, I'd rather just be overleveled and not engage with this system at all. You're all mine. Robolab Club Quarterly. Okay. Sure, whatever you say, bud. food buffs at the boss poll. Yeah. I hate that kind of system. I hate it a whole lot. I did a little bit of raiding uh, in WoW during Wrath of the Lich King and Legion. What was that? Woof. Yikes. Uh, and uh, You're all mine. The, my absolute least favorite part about like, the raiding no, experience no. is having to worry about elixirs and food buffs and shit like that. I hate it. I hate it! Oh, I tried playing oh, The Witcher 3 and it's just like, hey, do you wanna before you have any fight ever, do you wanna have a little, a nice little sit down and, and look through 13 different buffs that you could craft for yourself? I don't. I cannot imagine something that I would want to do less right now. Have 50 billion consumables on your character. Yeah, I hate it! I I don't like it! <laughs> oh. oh. Okay. I would rather spend much more time like, investing in getting a permanent but like, a permanent effect, than like, five minutes getting a bunch of consumables. Consumable temporary stat buffs are one of my least favorite mechanics in any video games. Time to take break. I think it might be. Much as I would like to find Lady Morag without a moment's delay, it's not wise to overexert ourselves. Rex in particular is only driver we have right now, so it would be dangerous for Rex to tire herself out. I wouldn't say I'm worn out just yet, but you're probably right. Better safe than sorry. Jin, do you think this area seems safe enough? Yes, I don't sense any hostile presence. Then break time it is! Can I have a word? Huh. I'm Bridget. But I hardly needed to introduce myself to you, did I? You must know practically all there is to know about me by now. The stuff in here, the old me, the me you knew. Is this journal the truth? I need to know if I can trust what I wrote in here. If you knew, you think it would change anything? Explain. 
The Bridget I knew. Well, you aren't her. It's like talking to a whole new blade. Makes sense. There's no going back to who I was. But I still need to know. I want to know what I did, what I really thought. And it seems wrong to just forget about the people who were important to me before. I need to remember them. <sighs> Jin, please tell. Really, Poppy is only just born, doesn't know much. But even Poppy knows stories of old drivers very important. Very precious indeed. Memories of Master Pond very important. Poppy always thinks must make many more Master Pond memories. So, I'm officially a Tornan driver now. Okay, let's make some memories. Quiet. Don't give me Do. more scenes with the weird little robot girl. Poppy think this world achieved very big technological advancement. Many buildings. Many people. Everybody probably very happy here. But it doesn't matter how many fancy tricks they learn. Deep down, they're all the same. They thought they were making their lives better with all this stuff. But in the end, it destroyed them. No. It's just a ruin. Poppy was made by technological advancement, too. Will Poppy... destroy the world as well? That's my problem, too. If this world is Father's world, the father made me to be as dangerous as any technology. Poppy and Mithra are the same? Yes. Kind of. But if... If Poppy destroys the world... Master Pan might get destroyed too. Maybe Mithra should destroy Poppy. Poppy? Poppy was trained speech Poor by Nopon. Who have never oh, do something like that. who talk like it. that? It's I... not that she can't form proper sentences; it's mm. that's just how she speaks. Hey, let's make a promise. Uh, a promise? Yes, that's right, Poppy. Promise that if you ever look like you're about to destroy the world, I will do what you asked of me. But in return. Can you promise me something? What would you like from Poppy? Mithra is scared of destroying the world too? Well, I'm doing my best to stop it coming to that. It's something else. It's... Huh? <laughs> no, actually, nothing. I don't have a request right now. Can I think it over? Of course. Then let's promise. What's this? 
Masterpon taught it to Poppy. He said it's not on promise ritual. Lift hand up in air, then boop, together. I see. I'm just not a fan of that kind of, like, cutesy character in anime. They always make it weird, and they made it weird in this game, too. When Poppy was first activated, she was in, like, like, robo-maid mode, and he had to restart her to make her in- to put her into normal mode, and there were maid costumes in the closet, and it's just like, eh, don't- Ugh. Could you not? I think we're all rested enough. Let's move out. We're slowly but surely getting closer to that world tree. Poppy, just hope Master Pond and the others are also heading for world tree. Hoping is all we can do on that front. Even if we don't meet up with them on the way, I should. I think we should wait at the wait a while at the base of the of, eh, of the tree. That does seem best. Let's hold up. Are we leaving or not? I'm coming. I'm coming. Honestly, the nervous guy. Looks like the next stage of our journey will be through that opening. Yeah, let's get moving. There. So, regarding the Poppy being a robo made thing, there was a pretty good heart to heart uh, that you get if you return to Tora's house later, where Poppy is talking about like all of the the cute dance programming. And, and, like, other weird shit that was put into her. Like, programmed into her. I should specify. Uh, and... Uh, Pyra and, uh, Bridget are both just, like... Just ready to beat the shit out of Tora for being just so uncool about women. Big ol' robot dog, Soul Eater Stanley! <laughs> yeah, we'll fight Soul Eater Stanley. Yeah, someone definitely said Stanley earlier. <laughs> Oh yeah, a cool thing about using Mithra, and one of the main reasons why I was just like trying to rush through the game until I got Pyra and Mithra back. One of Mithra's abilities uh, is whenever you use one of your abilities, there's a chance that it just instantly recharges. Which is just ridiculously strong. Damn it. Cool. I think the localizers went with this kind of name intentionally. Yeah, maybe. Like, random NPCs have more distinctive names. But so many of these, like, named fights are just shit like this. There's a lot of Soul Eater Stanleys out there in the world. Oh, these things used to be people. Yeah, so these are all flesh eaters, I believe. Which means they are like both human and blade. Just 
Jumbo spinning edge. Skyward slash. Yeah. Jumbo spinning edge. What? <laughs> what? Easy peasy. The tires roll. We did it. We defeated Stanley. Stanley. Stanley was one day in an office, typing on a computer. When he got an email from his brother that said that aliens and monsters were attacking his place. It's a new day, everyone. Look alive. And asked him for help. Not such a bad place. Not such a bad place. Huh. Okay, bring it on. What? New enemy You're not in supposed the to be able to aggro onto me. You're random mobs. I need to overlevel some more. Die! Have at your back! Die! Have at your back! Oh, you're just gonna get out! This is live after all. My goal's exactly! You're One shot! Let me take it! He's doing no something like it. Soon! Hold on! Break! Why not? Have at your back! Ultra Slash! Try to keep it up! We'll beat them. Goodbye. The power, the power of friendship. Have at you. was inside us all along. I only need to go to a doctor. There was a sword inside you for longer than four hours. We're back. Probably go to the what hospital. In my experience. In my experience, I picked up, I, I've picked up rebel gems all day. In my experience. Uh. Oh right, every character, like because care a bunch of different blades can have different. Uh. Like blades can have different weapons. But. You le you level up the skills for your different weapons separately, which sucks. Uh, one of the upsides to maxing out the the skill tree of like maxing out the skill tree of blades that you're actually going to use is helpful because it makes the blades more powerful. But maxing out the blades of maxing out just like random ass generic blades can also be helpful because it gives you weaponry for noobs. Which gives you a bunch of points that you can use to level up your skills in uh, in these weapons. Oh god, I still need another, th another thousand? Oh yeah, your drivers also have skill trees. Uh, chain attack, topple duration. Cancel a driver art after canceling a driver art? Let's so use a driver art after canceling a driver art. Huh. Uh, give me the luck. Nice one! Nice one! Nice one! Nice one! Fills the party gauge for each critical hit delivered. I need that one. That's really good. Oh, right. Is there a weapon upgrade that I can attach to Mithra? Not right now. What about Pyra, though? Hey, Pyra! Could you use a new sword? That's a 25% chance of attacking again after a successful auto attack. That seems really good. Wait, hang on. What's the effect on the that Mithra has on hers right now? Oh, hers is 784 auto attack. I don't think I'm getting any better than that. I'll switch back to Pyra, I guess.
There you go. And rock, how about Inferno, which also does that. Auto attacks are generally important because uh, auto attacks make it so when you... Hang on. Special effects. Increase damage dealt to, to machines? That's not as good as agility. Okay. Doing extra auto attacks is super important because auto attacks will f charge up your driver arts. Which are, like, where you get most of your damage from. So many, many! Mitra! There's no way around. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> what are with these deliveries? No time to play around. <laughs> no arguments there. No option but to wipe them out. Let's do it. Ugh. I ain't having that shit. This will be a walk in the park. You can go on the edge. Let's keep this up. Ha! I'm looking for sure. So fast. Die. Have at you. I can die. Die. Let me show you what I'm doing. Die. I'm going to see you. Thanks for that. Skyward Slash! Skyward Slash! Try to keep it up! Good choice! Ray of Punishment! Double Stop! Have a Everything's going as planned! Double Spinning Edge! Hit it! No! Ray of Punishment! Stop! Rex! Let me show you! Skyward Slash! Stop! I'm on you! Skyward Sword! Mag Photon Break. Double spinning edge. Die. Die. Double spinning edge. Die. Let me show for it. Magnificent. Why not? Double spinning edge. How did I beat the zombies? The Zimbabwe's. I didn't know there were monsters like that. Nothing like all rest, for sure. They've got a rotten knack of healing themselves. Almost like blades. I don't know, but maybe they're leftovers from the culture that created us. This is the architect's world. I guess nothing should come as a surprise. I wonder what kind of person he is. I didn't get to meet him. I mean, I have fragments of memories, blurred images. That's why I want to meet him. To create this awesome civilization? I can't imagine. Awesome? This? Huh? It's a heap of smashed up crap. Look at it. It was melted by a warhead or something. It's not Mondo all cool at all. Here is the hubris of mankind. If the architect was born here, then he must be as flawed as any other. No different from you people of all rest. Why do you hate us so much? What is it that you think we've done? Jin. That, that's Jin. Torna. Exclamation mark. All right. Mikhail, this is bad. Akos, how deep are we? 28,000 pets. We're nearly at the limit already. It's too much. Any more and we're... We're nearly out of the cloud sea. 
Just hold on a bit longer. Yeah, but... What about Jin? Are we just gonna abandon him? Well, I mean... Just a little... Just a little bit more. We're out! This is... the land of Mortha. First time I've seen it. Yeah. Would you look at that? It's nothing to shout about. Just a bunch of ruins. Malos? A testament to their hubris. Their hubris? So... humans lived here? All rest will suffer the same fate. So that's... Why, Jin... Is it really justified? What are you saying? I know why Jin wants to destroy everything. But everything can't mean everything, can it? Green went black. You're not there yet. That's okay. You'll understand soon enough. Let's cross that bridge when we come to it, huh? Hmm. I'm going to go over there. The Torn and Titan looks like he's quite eager to see it up close. I think anyone would be curious. Come on, let's go with him. Agreed. Surely the leopards can't mean to eat our faces, right? Oh, yeah, getting a little bit of that vibe. They shall get one. Can I just leave? I'm just, I'm just walking away. See you. You can leave. Random encounters. Two long cutscenes. If it sucks, hit the bricks. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> wow. Oh. <laughs> that was death charge. Oh, <laughs> you're right. It's scorched here and there. Traces of the Aegis's battle, I reckon. Must have been some battle. <sighs> What's the Torin Titan's Matrix. Even in old Torna, few people knew this place existed. I can scarcely believe it myself. Matrix? Like a womb? <sighs> These are... Blades. <gasps> but they look quite a lot like Titan, too. These are blades that perished in the process of becoming titans. Titans grow core crystals within their bodies. I believe you've seen this once before. Oh yeah, big Australian guy! He got killed pretty early on. It was blades. very sad. They aren't truly immortal. They are born from Titans. And when their fire burns out, they return to the Titan that bore them. Eventually, the blades that return transform into Titans themselves. Can that be true? We'll end up like that eventually? Mithra? Yes. It's true. The new Titan has no memory of its life as a blade. Just like returning to a core. 
These poor souls. They died along with their mother. Shared her fate. Ah! We, we got keen eyes level 3, though. So that's cool. What have we here? I am interested. I'm interested in this. We're getting to learn more about what's up with blades and titans. If they seek a fight, they shall get one. I don't really want to do much fighting until oh. I get my other party members back, though. Nope, oh, Jin fell. Whoop. Character that never opens her eyes got keen eyes. Hey, she opened her eyes at least once. Over the course of the game. No! We lost the upper hand! Gah! Gah! And arrived. <laughs> All in one piece. So blades are born from crystals and titans from blades. The titan, in turn, nurtures life. And someday, births new core crystals. Right. That's the life cycle of a blade. It is the way that the architect ordained for the world. Old Torna worshipped this cycle. In Old Torna, we revered the Titans, feared them. It was the sacred foundation of Torna, a nation where humans and blades lived in harmony. But humans couldn't live like that. The battle with Malos marked the end. It wasn't long after you and Adam left Torna. He did it. That worm of Malthus. That's the Pope. The Praetor? What did he do? The one who really destroyed this place? It wasn't the Aegis. It was him. <gasps> huh? Gruesome. Laura! But why? What did you think that was going to do? Yeah, I, I... If you die, he dies. What are you doing? Laura. Don't worry. If I die, you'll just go to sleep. Someone will find you, reawaken you, someday. For us humans, being forgotten is a much worse fate than death. We struggle so hard to make our mark on the world. Laura! When you awaken, to you, it'll be like I never even existed. Jin. 
the thought of you forgetting me, it's like one heart is being ripped in two. I won't forget you. I refuse to forget you. How could I ever? I thought I was ready for this. But now the time has come. I'm hopeless. I'm so sorry to do this to you. There is one way. One final chance. A way that we can be together. Flesh Eater, a more accurate name. But it seems like it's got some some consequences, some side effects going on here. I ate her. <gasps> Maybe we should never have left. I never knew. The Malthus was afraid of the Aegis' power. After Malice was defeated, he tried to wipe them out. The remnants of Torna were annihilated in the attempt. But... You'd already vanished by then. So we were slaughtered. For nothing. Oh. No, even if he wasn't trying to get you, a Malthus and a humans... ...would have done what they always do. We're the Architect's children. We turn into titans, the ground beneath their feet, but they feared us. Could you speak up a little? You're mixed a little low. To save the world? No. His real desire for Elysium is his desire for the Architect's power. Amalthus wants to use it to wipe out blades and titans. So that's why he was taking care of Rex and the Aegis. Even so, even if that's true, you lot and Amalthus, you're the same. No, Australian man. No, uh, eraser head lady. <sighs> Didn't you say you wanted to destroy the world? Take out the architect himself? I did say that. You know, I'm not so sure. What? I don't buy it. I can't believe that's what you're really trying to do here. Why do you say that? Haven't we... I could tell when we were fighting. I saw it in your eyes. The sadness. It was the look of someone who just wanted to die. Someone with no other way out. <sighs> hmm. You know, it was the way Pyra looked the first time we met. You don't know what you're talking about. 
Keep your stupid comments to yourself. Nuh-uh. You better believe we'll do it. You're stupid. We will destroy the one responsible for this world. And we will destroy all the humans who lived by his mercy. We are sick of being used as tools by humans. You're a tool. Well then, there's only one thing to do. As I thought. What's that? They're not really alive. Just autonomous cybernetic organisms. Once their central control is gone, they're programmed to act on their own. To destroy. These guys? Testaments to human hubris. Now do you see? Okay, time to take Infernal them down. Guldo! I'll do with them as I please. If you try to fight Infernal Guldo the usual way, you're gonna struggle to take it down. Uh, typical. You have a much easier time of it if you act activate Pyramithra's Ascended State. Just this once, I'll fill up the party gauge and cool down timer for you so you can achieve the Ascension and fight to your best advantage. The party gauge is not the maximum. Let's yep, keep do this the up. thing. Got it. What? That's all. That's really all I had to do, huh? Jin, Hyra, use the artifice. It's no use. The Cloud Sea is interfering. I can't give it commands. Damn. So it's all down to us, huh? Pyra, move in close if you can get a shot. Then get Mithra to use foresight, quick as you can. Understood. Ready to go. Okay, let's do it. Lightning. Could it be? Look, Rex Rex. Rex, Pyra, you okay? Jen, what the hell? That can wait. First, deal with that. Okay. This really is Final Fantasy XIII Lightning Returns. Torret, get, get, get out of here. Morag. Bring it in. Okay, time to take you down. I can take the blade! Let's give him a fire. Alright, right, I need to become friend mode first. That little blue tether needs to become yellow. As soon as we've got the piss tether going. And this thing is over. Piss tether active. Super mode. Become. Whoa! Damn, that was a lot of damage. Why not? I shall defend you to the last. So bash! Ha! I'm just shot. Make me hit it now. Oh yeah, the launch. Why not? I'm still getting stronger. Looked incredibly stupid, just like I wanted. Hey, you should you should make that thing explode, probably. <sighs> this is Rex Rex? What's matter? Find something. Uh no, it's nothing. Yeah, see, Poppy just talks talk like him. About what to do next? Rex Rex should join. Uh, yeah. Okay.
It can't be. What do you mean it can't be? We already know that it is. These things are are part human. Climb up the world tree to the top? Very, very tiring. It doesn't look that far from here to the surface, at least. We can manage that, surely. Don't you ever quit with that optimism, huh? <laughs> Rex, I can see why you've brought Jin, but I advise you not to let your guard down. Uh. Morag? Got a point. I don't need your remorse now, Jin. But when we're past this crisis, I'm taking you in. Oh wait, Nia's in in the jumpsuit. People. Yeah. If you resist, we'll kill you. Bridget and I. Yes. Morag. Yeah, I'm gonna kill him. What? Another monster? What is it this time? Master Pun above. Are they here for Jim? That's Jim. What's he doing with them? Weird. Let's ask questions later, huh? After we finally smashed him huh? up. Seriously? Well, okay. Hmm. Jim? Yes. Don't attack, he says. What? But it's the perfect chance. But I wanna. Huh. I told you not to attack. No oh, shit, he's got Conqueror's hockey. You sly devil. Hid that one up your sleeve, didn't you? No idea why he said that, but he must have his reasons. Huh? You can't be too predictable, right? Mick? Sounds like a plan. Never seen that side of Jin before. Let's bring him up. Then it's world tree climbing time. Yes, sir. Mick is short for Mikhail. Mikhail is a funny, sassy dude. Bridget. Huh? You're still... Like you used to be. Jin. Jin. Damn! Assholes. That's a bit unsporting of them, using a giant boat. We must hurry. The longer we wait, the bigger their advantage. Yeah, we gotta go, Rex. Gramps, you knew, right? We just need to run up Yggdrasil on foot. No problem. Why didn't you tell me? He is not like Malos. To be honest, I didn't know if you could handle it. You care too much at times. Hmm. Jin and Malos must be defeated. Who knows how that'll turn out. But facing them is Pyra and Mithra's unavoidable fate. So I kept quiet. Pyra and Mithra's fate? She shoulders the burden of sustaining your life. Rex, what burden are you taking for her? Can you live for something and hold true to it? Yeah, of course. I'm living for them. Pyra and Mithra. I see. Well, I guess you're okay then. Just be sure to walk your own path, Rex. Believe in yourself. Rex! Old man, what are you doing? Huh? Old man? Sorry, wait up! Heh, <laughs> got him! Uh, you need to swap to Mithra. And I need to put Bridget back on Morag. Who was my my third again? On Rex? I don't even remember. 
Wasn't you? Oh, it was it was Rock Lady. I hope I'll live up there to your expectations. Go. All right, and then you. I will do my best to prove my worth. And the other one, the other Hello dude. There. Ooh, I can upgrade Sword Bash. Yeah, I'm upgrading Sword Bash. Max! Wow. Gemini Loop! Healing Halo. Uh, I'll save up for the next level of Gemini Loop. Over here, we'll get... Uh... Deadly Twister and Raptor Beat. And that's all your weapons. For you, we'll also get Wing Smash. And then over here... Uh, yeah, we'll just get that one, I guess. And then for this one... Get Mountain Crusher. And then for this one... Oh, you've got nothing going on for this? Damn. Will I be able to afford getting all of these to level 3? Probably not. Darn. Close, though. Uh, can you get any hot new abilities? Yes! As it should be. Um, surprise attack. Extends break duration. Uh... Sure, not we'll get mutual bad, happiness, I guess. Bad. Not bad at all. Increase the attack power of mech arms class weapons by 27%. Wow. Amazing. Uh... Yeah, don't care about any of that right now. Time to get to stepping. Oh, right, right, right. Hang on. Uh, I don't know if there is any other instance in which this kind of thing happens, but if you control Nia as the party leader, you get to ride around on Dromark. You get to be on the big kitty cat. It's cats on cats. Hell yeah. It actually changes, like, your platforming mechanics, too, so... Generally, it's worse to be on Dromark, because it makes it harder to do, like, to do certain jumps. But it is very good that the game lets you do this. Wait, is there anything down there? Alright, and now I need to switch back, because fighting as Nia is drastically worse than fighting as Rex. Location World Tree. We did it. We got there. Is it faster than running on foot? Nope. <laughs> sure isn't. Also, she just runs around on foot if you switch to a different blade, if you have, like, a different blade out than Dromark. Your Majesty, yesterday we sealed Section 47. I see. This is even faster than the surveys estimated. Furthermore, we've detected surges of geothermal energy in the Royal Precincts. 
So we can't hold out for long. Even here. The ether flow is the lifeblood of the Titan. The temperature is increasing with its age. Perhaps we should hasten moving the capital to Gormod. We've only just recalled the Consul. And with no good explanation to the Gormati. We don't want to sow discord for no benefit. It's just, I fear time is running short. Indeed, but not only for us. Gormot is fertile for now, but the harvests have been declining for years. It's like a cry issuing up from the center of the world. These folks are with the Empire. Your Majesty, what is it? Nothing. Just my imagination. My sister. Where are you now? Wait, they're, they're siblings? I thought they were cousins. Oh, well. The Great Void, it's almost completely gone. After all, the Great Void was Ophion's doing. Yes, indeed. So with Ophion gone, the Great Void could not support itself. If only we were above the surface, we could easily cross. I mean, it doesn't look impossible to climb, but it's nastier than any mountain, that's for sure. Everyone. Here. Pyra. We're just going to teleport up using my giant robot. Oh, no, there's just a big elevator. The insides of the world tree. I'd never have thought. It seems to be an artificial tower enveloped by gargantuan plant life. Yggdra's elevator. <laughs> Hey, why can't you just go Hatsune Miku whenever you want? I have to do a lot of stuff in combat to make that happen, you know. It seems like we could use this to travel up. Oh. Pyra? What did you do? Honestly, I'm not sure myself. It's like my body is remembering something all by itself. It must be... Another power granted to the Master Blade by Father. So, we need to hurry. She's only allowed to press what? the button when she's in Hatsune Miku form. This was hardwired into my brain. So, Malos must have the same thing. Not good. Seems this is some kind of elevator. Yeah, uh huh? That's some fancy glazing. Ooh, you never were good with heights. Shut your eyes. Let's go. Mega float. Next stop, top of the world. Do 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 do. Oh. <laughs> Ah, oh, finally, his textures have loaded back in. Alright, we can pop him out of that now. <laughs> you can die when we're done. We made it this far. I don't plan on giving up. I thought he was going to be Damn. in there for the whole cutscene. <laughs> if Judicium hadn't gone down, we might have got you some better treatment. Uh -huh. When human cells are woven into the body of a blade, they awaken strange abilities. That's good enough for me. Like hockey, apparently. This will do fine. Even though she'd hate you for it, right? I know Laura wouldn't have wanted this. Even so, I've got to keep my promise. All right. I'm with you all the way. 
Hmm. Hey, Jin. You better not get sentimental. I found the ruins of Torna down in Moratha. Oh. There were half rotted blades there. Couldn't grow into titans. They must have lived on for a while down there. A man once said, live together with the humans. Really, we were just living for the humans. That was what the architect ordained for us. And look what we became. You're still sure about what you want, right? That thing. It's a reminder. To remind me what a fool I was to ever have faith in the architect. Yeah, how, how do you still have Laura's corpse if you ate her? Oh well. Also, thank you very much for the clips. Hey, look what I found! Congratulations! What I really want is at the end of this game, I want there to be a Mass Effect 3 ending. Where either you kill all humans, kill all blades, or every human becomes a human blade hybrid. Yeah, he probably just ate her heart, I guess. And I definitely want a child in a hoodie to tell me about the choice. Wow, cool tree. Am I getting close to the end of the game? It certainly seems that way. We've already been going for four hours. It must have sensed our skill. Still aggro these random idiots. New enemy in the mix. Oh, I don't care Great about gathering speed. point. What am I even thinking? New enemy in the mix. I could do this alone. You know? This music's really good, though. Draw the enemy's attention. Maybe we'll get out of the way. That was well. What your attitude? Sword back. Gemini, I can do it. I finally got something right. Everyone's getting right. 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 the culmination of years of training. Let me take it. Here I go. Double spinning. Superbly executed. Treasure acquired. Favorite Rex move is when he yeets the sword. That's that's doing a a a blade art. He just gives Mithra the sword back, and then she does something cool, and then gives the sword back to Rex so he could get back to auto attacking. Congratulations. This place is really cool. Definitely got some Mekonis vibes. When did it get so late? Don't when did it get so late? A new locale. I've gained a new memory.
7 a.m. Damn. Okay, bring it on. Seven up in the morning. Seven a.m. Waking up in the morning. Gotta get up. Gotta go downstairs. Up. You're all mine. Is that a motorcycle enemy? What's his name? Uh, I thought it was it was gonna be like Speedy Joe. No, it's the Mark VI Familian. Speedy Joe is way better. I wish the treasure boxes were feeding through the area. Yeah, is. I thought for a moment, like, did Xenoblade 1 do that? But Xenoblade 1 didn't really have treasure chests in a traditional sense. Walking around Future Land and there's Captain Morgan's treasure. Oh yeah, we are on top. One shot. Let me take it. Oh, that was unceremonious. Double spinning edge. Quick and art. Get the music got a little confused there. Ooh, Aquatic Hunter 4 for all those aquatic enemies that I'm playing. Draw the enemy's attention. Really? I was really afraid of that. We we beat up the motorcycles. Oh. Where is it? Is it upstairs? Give me the heart to heart. I crave it. Oh. I want it, I need it, need it. Say Rex. Do you truly believe that Elysium exists? Do you even have to ask? Don't you, Morag? I don't understand why you'd even be here then. No, that's not what I mean. I just wanted to clarify how everyone truly feels. After all, don't most people only know of Elysium from fairy tales? Well, I guess so, but our chum here's seen the real deal in his dreams or whatever, right? There were wide green fields and a warm breeze and a beautiful city like nothing I've ever seen. Pyra was standing on top of a hill overlooking it all. I'm sure it must have been Elysium. There's no place like it in Orest. The place you saw in your dream. Is it prudent to believe in Elysium based on that information alone, I wonder? Don't you trust me and Pyra, Morag? Oh no, I trust you both. But just because a place exists in your dreams does not necessarily mean it exists in reality. Zeke, can you honestly say you have never doubted Elysium's existence in the slightest? Well, I guess I have wondered from time to time. At the end of the day, the only way to be truly sure is to go there, right? True enough. As for now, Rex believes it's real, and that's enough for me. Aww, Zeke! I mean, sure, it's best for everyone if it does exist, but even if it doesn't, does that really change anything? Oh yeah, in case you haven't ta gotten a good look at Zeke before, look at those belts! He's got so many belts, and he's wearing a belt sash, and he's got a trench coat. He's the coolest, he's got an eye patch, he's the coolest dude.
permission. So what if there's no proof? Chasing after dreams is what real men are born to do. Very well. I appreciate your passion. Though I'm not quite sure I understand your notion of a real man. Hey, no worries. You'll figure it out eventually. I mean, you're basically the manliest one here. Zeke, there are some things in this world you don't joke about. Even my temper has its limits. Would you like me to teach you a lesson you won't ever forget? Oh god, she's gonna murder him! Uh, Morag, you're scaring me a little. Hold it, hold it, I was just joking around. <laughs> L listen nobody needs to die here, okay? Okay? Are you saying I'm not ladylike? I'll, I'll cut you down where you stand. Ooh. What have we here? I hope Zeke just starts at 1 HP after that. Delete his other eye. Orb. Excuse me. The nuclear dump facility. little on the nose. Hey, the civilization nuked themselves! Hey, in case you didn't- in case you thought we were joking, no, here's the actual the word the nuclear! Whoop! Hey, buddy. Hey, I- Haywire Coastal! I'm using game mechanics. I have summoned Hatsune Miku to slay my enemies. Splash hazard break. Uh, yep, that's a splash hazard break if I've ever seen it. Splendid. Go on, raise us some more. Treasure acquired. Oh yeah, I could take I could take the team back to Auntie Kareen's. Get everyone a nap so they can level up. Yeah, sure. Let's go do that. Maybe them being higher level means we will be harassed by fewer random encounters. Speaking of taking a nap, I should maybe end the stream Let's soon. We're getting close to 420, but cool shit is happening. But also, it could be another, like, six hours to finish the rest of the game, so... No, take, take a nap. Just six minutes. 
See, Gramps? I'm getting better. Really? Oh, shit, is Zeke gonna hit level 69? Yeah! Oh. My incredible power knows no bounds. Oh, there's multiple more chapters? There is still All right. much to learn. That helps. He's level 69 in spirit. Sorry to bother you, everyone, but I, there's somewhere I'd like to visit. What's this all about, then? I was wondering... I was hoping to take a look at the Steel of Judgment in the Spirit Crucible Elpis. Would you take me there? I mean, sure, I guess, but are you sure? The place is pretty tough on blades. I'm always up for a challenge. Oh yeah, the, one of the things that led to. I hope it didn't uh, or anything. Ugh, I slept like a baby. One of the things that led to Nia being revealed huh. to be uh, a blade was we were going down into a tomb uh, to get the the third Aegis sword, and Nia oh, was gosh. just like struggling huh. to exist because down in the tomb. There, there was an effect. There was a thing that was making blades all weak and and struggling. It didn't really seem to affect Rex, which was a weird thing because he's got the core crystal. He's got half a core crystal in him to live, but bad Wi-Fi. Yeah. Come out, come out. In Shadowrun terms, I believe it would be noise. Speaking of noise, yeah, everybody, everybody yell at once. Okay, I should, I should end things here, because if I keep going, I'm, I'm gonna want to just keep going, because for all of the many, many problems I have with this game, I am invested and want to keep playing. And it's not just sunk cost for lackey, because as you can see here, I got 77 goddamn hours in this game. And I spent 60 American dollars on it. But... <laughs> RuneScape doubling, yeah. Uh, alright, one moment, let me adjust my mic. Stockholm Syndrome it is. <sighs> not exactly, but... Man, this game's got this game's got problems. I want to like this game so much more than I do, but it's not to say that I don't I don't like it cuz I like it. But playing it kind of sucks. Oh well. Sunk conk fallacy. I get it. Uh so yeah, beautiful flawed problems. Problems beautiful for say per se. Uh, so thanks everybody for showing up. Upcoming streams Thursday, I'm thinking, will be across the obelisk with Lawyer Dog. Uh, and Saturday is currently up in the air. I I'm going to to do some some planning for the next Mario thing. I promise, but I'm <laughs> I'm. I have been unwell for almost a week now. Lawyer Dog gave me the gosh dang plague. And not even the C word plague. It's it's not like, oh sorry everybody, I got COVID, and everybody's like, oh, we understand what COVID is. It's just like, no, I don't feel good. Sorry, I woke up a little sniffly and my tummy hurts. <laughs> no stream today. Hat being hit hit with an invisible status effect upon buying Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Oh god. Too true. Thanks again to uh, Ash for the 500 bits and Cult for the 500 bits. And thanks to everybody for showing up and hanging out and chatting and all that good stuff. Uh, I will try and... L let me see. I, I broke my combo. I broke my the thing that I say. Because I'm gonna check to see if there's anybody to raid right now. Everybody's offline. It's almost one in the morning. Gosh dang it. 
Uh, if people have cool streams to go view, put them in the Discord. Cross promotion. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna go die a little bit. Everyone have a good evening. Farewell!